Welcome to Swish and Flick, an all Potter podcast. Swish and Flick, everyone. The Swish and Flick. Hello and welcome to episode 99 of Swish and Flick. I'm Tiffany. I'm Megan. I'm Katie. And I'm like crazy today, so I apologize for my antics in ahead of time. In ahead of time? Ahead of time. As am I a little bit. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Julie Creeth. Thank you, Julie. Thank, thank you. Julie. Have we done that in a while where we're saying a thank you? Thank you. You don't start them. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> Shane. <laughs> What's that line about Shade in her song? Um, Shade never made anyone less gay. Anybody. Anybody less gay. Listen to you correcting things. Um, Throwing shade. Hashtag Taylor Swift is amazing. Throwing shade never made anybody less gay. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Today we will be discussing chapter 27 of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Padfoot returns. So make sure that you have read the chapter and you're ready to traverse among the details. (laughs) Before we begin, let's go to Meg's Mouse (laughs) Tales for some weekly profit. I can you just do me a favor before Mm. the end of Goblet of Fire? Can one day instead of actually saying out loud Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, can you just go HP Goff? I say golf. Yeah, Mm. I I say golf all the time. Every single time we record golf, I can do that. You just let me know when. Um, okay, so weekly profit. Logan actually asked basically what we're talking about in the Discord chat already mm-hmm. as our weekly profit. Would you wait 10 hours for the new Hagrid ride at Universal? LOL. Because Hagrid's opened yesterday as of the day that we're recording this, mm-hmm. and the wait was over 10 hours. No, I would not. Yeah, the app said 600 minutes. Yes, the app said 600 yeah, said minutes. 600 However, minutes. I know somebody who waited 13 hours. See, no, but the thing you. is, is like people went there with the intent yes, to do that. They mm-hmm. knew they if were If it was wait. just like, you know, a regular day of the week, no, I would not wait that long. If I go there with the intent to ride it because it's like opening day, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I'd say. Or like, no. Meg I would I bring saying, a blow up bed. Dude. <laughs> or those things, those things that blow up and it just becomes like a little like hammock, like a beanbag hammock. Yeah, I mean, the things you those? like wave in the yeah. wind and yeah. then tie. Yeah. Yeah. Here's my question: Like, how so do you you're p- standing there for ten plus hours? Sure. Thirteen. You said someone did. Um, that's a long time. Well, yeah. Eating, drinking, going to the bathroom, and only you have to one be a team. person from your party could leave at a time. Yeah. That like, sounds what about if you're right. like here's, all the way up at the front though. They, people well, say it's hard to get back in the line. So like what are you gonna do? Here's you know? the thing. So okay, so this is what I want to talk pants. about a you're little bit. You're gonna wear a diaper. I, I probably I mean, would. I guarantee you that some people did. Wear wear like a depend? Yeah. Probably. Go ahead. Um so universal I understand why they did this, but so with the Haggard roller coaster, they have input the virtual line. Today. Yes. So for opening day, they didn't do that. And the reason why they didn't do that, this is my take. I don't like have insider information or anything. This is just what I think and what I've kind of heard through the internet. They do that as a gauge for the competition to let people know, Mm. look how popular we are. Oh, well, yeah, because people are going to talk about, hey, I stood Whoa, line for 13 hours. this was hours. a 10-hour wait for this ride. Yeah, and then they can be, be like, oh, Disney, your wait for Slinky Dog Dash was only eight hours on opening day. We had a longer wait time than you. Well, and I think, too, it's it's opening day, so they yeah. want, like, there's those people that want to say, I yeah. waited in line for 10 hours yeah. Yeah. on it's a story. opening day. Yeah. Yes. Like, I, the only thing that I've ever done like that, um, so Cedar Point is close to our house. Um, we're about 45 hour minutes hour away 45 hours away. 45 <laughs> hours away 45 minutes to like an hour away um and when they closed down the mean street oh yeah my sister and her best friend and i all went that very last day um and rode it one last time and like we even got sticker stickers no we got buttons that were like um you know we rode it one last time on its final day and what they do because they do um hollow weekends during like the september october time before they close it for the season and they have a graveyard um, mm-hmm. close to the front of the park where they have old rides. Mm-hmm. So once they're done, like they cut people off. Um, we were able to ride it. They cut people off and then they take the sign off of the uh, ride and they have a parade and they walk the <laughs> sign all the way up and they had like a whole, like we walked past it um, going to the ride because it was all the way in the back of the park. 
So we walked past the little cemetery and there was like a fresh grave dug for <laughs> the sign. And so when we left that night, it was like half in and out of the ground. That's crazy. Um, like a new gravestone cool. for it and everything. That's pretty cool. So that was something. I'm like, I just. It's a talking but point. Like, yeah. And, you know, the, the the line was maybe like we might have waited like two hours, which that for me is a long time. Oh, yeah. Because I don't wait because I don't. I like to ride rides, but not that much. With Universal and Disney, like their opening days are literally just insane for anything. Mm that they do like I remember Hogsmeade itself opening for the first time and like seeing those videos like the helicopter videos of the Mm -hmm, line mm -hmm. the line was out through City Walk like it was insane. Well, People, I'm sure news stations in Orlando mm-hmm. were like all over this. You oh, know what yeah. I'm saying? Oh, Especially yeah. with the yeah. celebrities being there and all that jazz. Correct. So like now that they had their opening day, they were able to like show off to the world, hey, look, we had a 10 hour wait. It's now a virtual line. So basically what happens is you get to the park in the morning and you check in and you say, I want to ride the ride. And it gives you a time to come back. Dude, I'm and so here's, down. Here's what is so ingenious about that. And like Disney's been doing it for years with Fast Pass system, which is awesome. Um, but you're not spending money if you're standing in line. Correct. So they don't want you to stand in line for 10 hours. They want you to walk they around. They want you to go wine. to the shops in Hogsmeade Have to go and ice eat. Cream. Yeah. Yeah. To, yeah. To go get ice cream, to buy your refillable pop mugs. And, and guess get, what, Universal? You know, I will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. I I'll mean, do it. <laughs> it's ingenious. It's like, yeah. And like, it is so hot down there right now. So like to stand in that line for 10 hours and like most of the line from what I could see is outside. How hot is it down there right now? I think it's like in the eight. There will, the other day it was like in the nineties. Um, I like think it's been in like the humidity. Yeah, yeah. The humidity is what, what gets it. It's like, the other day, the the heat index was like over a hundred or something. With the Let, let's talk about the humidity and curly hair, because if y'all saw me today, if you were on Instagram Live, my hair would be ridiculous. <laughs> it, would be, it would be nuts. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. But like, I mean, if I I can understand why people would do it. It's just, yeah, not I'm not going to lie. Long, you would do it. If Katie and I lived down there, you would, I would have done it. You would have been, yeah. like, like, I just, yeah, that's I'm, your thing. Yeah. yeah. And like, I think that's totally cool. That's just not, I'm so, I'm so impatient. Oh my like, gosh. I was too. seeing those pictures and I'm like, oh, I, be I there. wish yeah, that I, I was there. I know. And like, I know that that sounds crazy to some people, but like for me, like we, and like, I don't want this to come off as snotty, but like we've been, we've been so lucky to be able to go there as many times as we have yeah. that to me, that's not a wasted day. To me, that's oh, like no. adding an experience and like, mm. look what I got to do. I got yeah. to wait to ride this on opening day. So like, it wouldn't have been a waste for me. I would have enjoyed it. Plus there were so many people there who were like cosplaying yeah. and um, there's this one girl that we follow. We actually, she's the girl that we met over in Edinburgh, her, her like channel. She has a YouTube channel and she has an Instagram. It's called simply Potter. And she cosplayed as Hagrid, but like, not like a full on, like, like what Sarah did at our one party. <laughs> like not like that. It was more like toned down. Are where, you Hagrid? Yeah. I think it'd be funny if like the next time I go, which I don't know when that will be, um, like, to I, ride it as Hagrid. I like think it should happen. So yeah. like the next time I go down, I'm going to bring. That's and awesome. I like, but I also have like extra things that I'm like, I don't, you can't take that on a ride with you because I have like his umbrella and then I bought his lantern. Mm-hmm. Is it Simply Potter Girl? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Simply Potter Girl. But her, <laughs> her channel. so great. <laughs> her channel is awesome. She does all these. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's awesome. She does all these awesome videos like crafting, like Potter themed crafts and um you met this person or no yeah it was so funny we literally ran into her and her friends like four times on our trip within three days like we saw oh, them i remember you telling us and about we went yeah. all over it, it was all over well the first time we saw not her but her two friends was on the train up in scotland like on the hogwarts express train then the next day we drove to northern england to go to annick castle and they were there so we ran into them at Annick Castle, and later then we saw them later that night in Edinburgh on Victoria Street in the Harry Potter shop. Hmm. There was another time, and then too. we saw them in the graveyard, at Greyfriars yep. Kirkyard in Edinburgh, when we were looking for the Tom Riddle, um, the Tom Riddle grave. Yeah. It was just, it was insane. It was so funny. I was like, but, I guess we're best friends now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is really awesome, Josie. Um, I I did see some sneak peeks of the ride because I know you guys want to wait. I'm avoiding I it. I saw some pictures, but like, I'm not, I'm not watching like a POV or anything. 
I watched a little bit of it, but this was also last night. And I was one, I was like on the verge of having a big migraine. So I'm like, Sarah, put your phone down until I was like real tired. Um, so I didn't watch the whole thing. But I, it was cool what I did see. I mean, I have heard stellar I think reviews. I'm going to cry if I ever go on it. Like, I mean, I shouldn't say I'm going to. I know I'm going to go on it. I just don't know when I'll be able to like, I'm going to cry. There. I'm going to cry. Because, like, Hagrid's, like, my favorite dude, you know? I'm I get emotional warning about both of you guys, like, as soon as we walk in that queue, I'm going to cry. You you cry, babe. I'm going to. I mean, just, sometimes I still cry walking into Hogsmeade. So, like, going same. into a new thing, I'm just going to be like. Oh, <gasps> I'm going to be emotional. But, like, I wonder, me. like. Totes emotion. Yeah. Totes emotion. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to figure out another time that we yeah, can all go. Yeah, for sure. Um, for those inquiring minds, I bought my... Dramamine, Don Drowsy, all day version. <laughs> Hashtag That's not good. sponsored. <laughs> Hashtag, hopefully I don't vom bomb. Um, I really hope you don't because I really hope that you enjoy it enough to like want to go on it more than once. Well, if it works, I might be able to do Forbidden Journey. Because that would Tiffany, be so cool because what like, needs you to happen. missed so much of that ride. Oh, and yeah. I feel I sad. Missed, mm, <laughs> what needs to happen is you take it, you don't get sick. So then when I'm there, we can ride it together. I'm Hagrid and you're my Harry. I would be your Harry. <gasps> you're always totally my Harry. Totally bound as Harry or Fang, or Fang. <laughs> you do like quality. I actually pooches. would rather be Fang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about doing that when we were gonna go, but they didn't do the celebration. Do you remember that? Yeah. We had talked about when all four <sighs> of us were gonna go. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, Everybody I'll be Hagrid and you guys be um, fluffy. fluffy. Yes. We yeah. would have been. Perfect. <laughs> Everyone cross your fingers that happens this coming, this following January. I hope that. And if it does, yeah. we're doing that. Yeah. We're going to oh, be yeah. fluffy. Yeah. I'll tell yeah. I, you, I'm a thousand percent down to be haggard again and again and again. You got to keep your hair long then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> The only thing is Shut that like it's page. blonde now. Who, I like it when it's blonde. Was it one of you guys that said I talked about it last night? We did our hangout with our Phoenix patrons. Um, and I was like, Yeah, but I'm blonde now. And they're like, just you're haggard in the summer, summertime haggard. That's right. <laughs> Before we move on from the topic, sure. Um, I think it was like it was last night we were doing a hangout with our patrons. Our friend Chris texted us at like I don't know, it was like six thirty or something. He's oh like, my god, okay, this is so funny. Think about what you were doing at eight a.m. this morning. That's how long people have been waiting, like to know, to ride, <laughs> to that ride, ride. the ride. Ugh. I like, wonder, oh like, god. when did they cut people off? They had to have like pretty early, honestly, because. If you ended up waiting 13 hours from 8 o'clock. That's almost the entire park. I mean, the park yeah. closes at 9 usually. No, Can you dude. imagine waiting for hours and hours and hours and hours and then being turned away? I think they, they would ooh. never turn you away. They would turn you away before you got yeah, in line. I think they were. Which is yeah. nice. Like they would, because they're always thinking ahead. So they're like, okay, so if we let this person get in line, they're going to ride it at so 9 p.m. So they stop letting you line up. And yeah. they'll yes. stay, op- probably they would stay open later they will to stay let open the line late. complete. Yeah. 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 They have to, yeah. Um, did, did the like celebrities get to ride it like way, like the day before, like Tom Felton was there and Rupert I think they wrote it right. yes, they, had a, a they had a media a media preview the fall, yeah. the the night before which, oh okay did yeah. you guys see the the um like how they opened it yes it was, it was i like i was I only so got mad to see, like I a started, kind of video i started recording and i just missed them saying swish and flick i was so excited because warwick davis was like you know how to do wingardium leviosa it's a swish and flick and i was like <gasps> and i literally it started recording right after he said that i was sad but it I did get them like all the boxes yeah. moving up. I'm like, how did they do that? Yeah, I know. It's very cool. Um, I enjoyed that a lot. Universal, like, uh, so I'm really in this can just be for like discord people, but I'm part of a Walt Disney world annual pass holder group, even though I'm not one yet, but I just, they're my people and we get each other. So I'm in this <laughs> Facebook group. And then I'm also part of a universal annual pass holder group because we used to be annual pass holders. So, People in the Disney pass holder group can be really snarky towards Universal, and it really annoys me because I'm like, why can't people like both? Yeah. Why is there this like stupid rivalry between Disney and Universal? And the Disney people were like, oh, look at what they did. Like They had it be known that there was such a long wait because they need to let Disney know, blah, blah, blah. And Disney doesn't even put what? that information out anymore because they know that they're not competition. And I'm like, guys, they are competition to each other. And it's a beautiful thing because they push each other to do really awesome things. Yeah. Think about what they're doing with Galaxy's Edge. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The Gal- Guaranteed. Galaxy Edge rides like not 
You have to thing. make reservations yeah. to get into there. You can't just yeah. go. Yeah, because people were and already you only about get that. a four hour window in that area because it's so jam packed, and they don't want you to like not enjoy it. So how they're you spreading only, it. How do they get you out of there with your magic band? It's like tracked. So if you go to try and like get in a line or or oh, buy anything or even like get a drink or get into a restaurant, they scan your magic band and it'll tell you if you're. It'll tell them if your time is up and they won't let you in. But they were saying um, the people in this Disney group were like bashing Universal basically because of this ride. And I was like, guys, people can like both yeah. things. I was like, I was an annual pass holder to Universal for years and I grew up loving Disney. Like, yeah. who cares? The reason why Disney tr- went out and did this massive Galaxy Edge project was because Universal did Hogsmeade. Mm-hmm. And it took that long for them to like get that going. But like, so Disney announced Galaxy Edge, and then Universal announces Diagon Alley, and then Disney announces Toy Story Land, and then Universal announces a new Hagrid coaster. Like, yeah. they just go back and forth, and it makes both parks and even really, better. Yeah. It's like, Yes, come on, keep right. going. Like, yeah, because I know. I know like, like, what's next? I Give me the ministry. Wait. I, it's probably I, going to be yeah. years before I get to see Galaxy's Edge. But like, just looking at the pictures and seeing how much it's detail gonna be, they went to, oh my land! Galaxy Edge will be open when Katie and I are there in December, but we might just avoid it because it's going to be insanity. Yeah, I don't yeah. know yet. Well, I might. especially in December. Yeah, I just. But we are amazing. going the first week, so it's like that's actually downtime. Because kids aren't out of school yet, True. which is nice. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. You got to peep in there. Come on. Um, did you? Yeah, we probably will. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys see that um, Tom Felton and, and uh, Rupert Grant were like asked about like redoing like their characters? And they both were like, um, Tom Felton, he's like, I would play Lucius. He's like, I think they'd be kind of cool. And then so like good. if they did like Cursed Child, they both were like, no, we'd go back. Basically. And I'm like, Art. yes, do it. Dude. But I don't think it's ever going to become a movie. Too but bad Dan wouldn't. <sighs> what? The but I think that I'm okay with that. Is that a bad oh, thing? Like, get no. Jamie Park. Is it Jamie Park? Jamie Bell? What's his name? Who played him on Parker, Broadway? Right? Oh, Jamie Parker, I think is his name. Like, he does a great Harry. Like, he's great. Yeah. He is really good. Yeah. Harry. <laughs> Harry. <laughs> Should we? Uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Recap some stuff. Wait, what was that? All right, to the chapter, the actual episode. <laughs> Gosh, but you know we, what? Hey, we talked about Harry Potter. I'm stuff. getting pumped. I'm not complaining. I'm pumped. I love theme parks. It's going to be fun. Mm. Agreed. I told them since if you're making t shirts, I want one, even though I won't be there. I said, absolutely, you can have one. I don't no. want, I want to be left out. Sorry, we're <gasps> going to bring a cardboard. Card take, <laughs> take my shirt and have people sign it for me. That'd be pretty Aww. cool. That would be cool. That'd but be like, cool. we legitimately should take a flathead of you and like take pictures of you around Universal. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be flat Sarah. We could. Oh my gosh! Sandwich. No, remember how when we did the celebration weekend, we bought that little. Um, yeah. We bought pygmy the little puff. pygmy puff and like did uh, Instagram stories I, with it. Can we put a? Can we put her face on a pygmy puff? Or wait, what creature do you want that we can buy it on there? Because I'll laminate a picture of your face and we'll stick it on. Do they have Job of the Hut? <laughs> All of us were just like, <laughs> she is Job. <laughs> what am I? What's my name? Salacious Crumb. Salacious yeah. Crumb. Yeah. yeah. Bestest friends in the whole wide world. You let me know what it's creature Crom you want. It's Crom and Jabba. Yeah, pick a creature. We'll buy a plush and we'll like take pictures of you <laughs> everywhere. Oh, God. Okay. All right, recap. Okay. Last time, Harry was desperately trying to figure out how to breathe underwater for an hour. And he was running out of time. And Ron and Hermione helped until McGee wanted to see them. So Harry snuck back to the library to search for more. But still nothing. He passed out there, woken up by Dobby, and he has all the answers. Gillyweed. <laughs> Simple, dude. So Harry's true Gryffindor, Gryffindor colors show in the lake because he has to make sure all of the hostages are rescued before he finally swims back to the surface. And now he's tying for first with Cedric. What? <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because I'm hanging. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And this week's episode 27, The Return of the Pooch. Get it? <laughs> we see Ron is excited to share his daring feats from under the water. But, you know, under the he's sea. lying. <laughs> under the sea. <laughs> Snape isn't pleased with the Gryffindors and potions class. But, you know, what else is new? 
Karkaroff shows Snape that he has something up his left sleeve, and uh, <laughs> Snape is not happy about that either. Because, I mean, when is he happy? Never. Well, he was, you know, t- some years ago. Shade! <laughs> <laughs> so it's a hog, it's hogs, weed, nope. <laughs> hogs, weed. Hogs, weed. <laughs> That's it's the a, new brand of gillyweed. It's, it's turned into a pig. <laughs> uh, it's Hogsmead weekend time. Hogsmead. <laughs> <laughs> Episode title. <laughs> and Harry goes and he gets some socks for Dobby. And then they have to meet a dog about some bones. Um, the, <laughs> the trio meets Sirius and we all learn some new things. <laughs> Like they have a serious conversation over chicken bones. No bones about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, in Harry's opinion, one of the best things about the second task being over was that um, everybody wanted to hear about what happened down at the lake, which meant that Ron was getting attention, so he wasn't being, you know, a major pain in the butt. Right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but... Unfortunately, Ron's version of the events that happened in the lake were getting more and more epic, which each time that he told the story. I loved this part. Is anybody surprised? No. no. He did this with when he got attacked by Sirius Black. Or he, he wasn't oh attacked, God, but you're right. But yeah, he he said tried he to like was. stab him. So at first his story is matching the truth, right? Dumbledore puts all the hostages into a bewitched sleep in McGonagall's office. Assuring them that they'd be safe. I would still poop my pants. I would be so scared. (laughs) Oh, my God. But one week later, Ron was telling his thrilling tale of kidnap in which he struggled single-handedly against 50 heavily armed merpeople, and they beat him into submission. (laughs) (laughs) Can you imagine Harry just sitting there like, just let him go. (laughs) (laughs) But, I mean, he let some fish beat him. Hmm. You just call the mer people some fish. <laughs> oh my god! Love <laughs> how nobody says anything after she says we're like, oh god. <laughs> that would be as offensive as telling the centaurs they're just horses. Oh, yeah, but they're, oh, I guess they're both smart creatures, but centaurs are like real smart. They like. Were you calling the mer people stupid now no. too? Now they're just dumb fish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> mer people, mer people. Are they smart? Who knows? Mer people. <laughs> do they swim under the water? Yes, they do, because they are fish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Ron has some good quotes here. But I had my wand hidden up my sleeve, he assured Padma Patel who seemed to be a lot keener on Ron now that he was getting so much attention and was making a point of talking to him every time they passed in the corridor. Someone's got a crush. (laughs) Oh, is this why in the one, uh, not in the one, in Cursed Child, he marries Padma Patil in one of the lines? (gasps) Oh. Dude, you just blew my mind. Well, because I'm like, I just felt like that was really odd. Because there's so much as Goblet of Fire. Yeah. Real chills. Oh. (laughs) That's real good. <laughs> Look at Megan's face. <laughs> I d- it just was like out of left field for me, like watching. Um, yeah. So yeah. I was like, why? Why now her you, of all people? Now um, you make sense. Yeah. We'll now you make sense. Was that a spoiler? <laughs> we are not. It's spoiler not spoiler free. Yeah, we are not. Spoiler We did not keep the secrets. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> True. We didn't keep the secrets. We don't keep no secrets. We don't do hashtags. We do pound signs. We do peace signs. Hashtag (laughs) secrets. Aren't hashtags and pound signs the same thing? Yeah. It's just a matter of what you call them, Sarah. He's annoyed with all of you. We're going to move on. Ron says, quote, I could have taken those mer idiots anytime (laughs) I wanted. Ron thinks they're stupid. He (laughs) said it first, not me. Hermione says, what were you going to do? Snore at them? (laughs) (laughs) But Hermione wasn't in a very good mood because people had been teasing her. And I said, jealous? Because she was the thing that Crumb would miss the most, according to the uh, song. But why aren't they talking smack to, like, Ron being, yo, you're Harry's favorite thing? Like, I think that's pretty rude. You're only saying that because she's a female? Like, what if his favorite dude was, like, 
some other person. You know what I mean? Like a guy from Durham Street. It is a little bit judgy. It is. Well, yeah. It, well, it is. But I also think they're like, Harry's our hero. You know what I mean? Hmm. Let's be real. Harry and Crumb both would have had their firebolt tied there. Not people. Well, so, 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 so many... <laughs> Swimming Swimming in in the the sea. (laughs) (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) Floating in the water. People are people are jealous of Hermione and they have been, and it's just getting worse since the ball. It just makes me angry. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, rightfully so, but I'm just saying, like, that's it's jealousy, it's crazy. Well, yeah, too. Like they say, like, why would like well, because later on in the chapter when Percy, or Percy, not Percy, (laughs) Pansy's like, Well, she's ugly. Like Right. It's jealousy. (sighs) Oh yeah. Why you, gotta, why you gotta be that way? Because that's painting. the way that some people that's are. That's the way the cookie crumbles. So cookie, 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 cookie. <laughs> a couple he doesn't people... eat cookies anymore. Yes, yes he, he does. does. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jinx, you owe me a cookie. <laughs> we just get real fired up. <laughs> well, we did, I posted about it. <laughs> Furry Potter in the Goblet of Cookies. Oh it was God. on Sesame Street. Oh, oh right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. They had the correct. What were you gonna say, Katie? Some people in the chat are saying. um that they don't really get why Hermione would be the thing that Crumb would miss most. Like that he just met her. Although I will say, but I think that he may have he may have fallen in love. Yeah, yeah. love uh, works in its own ways. It could be short. It could be long. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's mm. not up to you. Mm. And then mm. Christine mm. said, just "This also confirms that Harry and Ron could have gone to the ball together. <laughs> why not? <laughs> <laughs> I still Honestly, love that they were like, we could have gone they together. <laughs> why not? And then Hermione's like, I'm getting a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that." I think that this says a lot, honestly, about Crumb's character. Yeah. Like, I think, Crumb, so sorry. some people are saying that they have issue with it. I don't think that I have issue with it. It's just, um, I think maybe some people just don't believe in love at first sight, and that's fine. You don't have to believe it. Mm. But some people really do experience well, it. Well, I, I could see, like, m- maybe not necessarily love at first sight, but, like, I have a, like... He might have, have a very a visceral, real connection with yeah. her. And he talks to her and he's able to, you know, she's not like all those other girls that are fawning all over him. Um, yes. Yes. And he's like, finally, it's someone who like wants to talk to me. Just like, get to just, know me. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't that's really good point. envision his family being particularly good finders. <laughs> kind for some reason. I don't know why. I like, feel I like just, he really, he really, like, I feel like he's a loner. On her. He's, I feel like he's a loner and he is kind of like encompassed in this fame that he has. And that is all the attention he gets is because of his fame. Mm-hmm. And, and because Hermione him. doesn't yeah. care about that, that's why immediately he has this feeling of, wow, she's really important to me. She was, well, she was his missing puzzle piece. And it just, bo- yeah. it just yeah. bothers me, like, on her behalf that people are like, well, I can't believe like he would pick yeah. you and you're not so great. And like, oh, terrible. you wouldn't say that about anybody else. Like, why do you care that like, they would have said that about anybody who he would have. I'm picked. just saying in general, you know what all, I mean? each one, yes. like they weren't saying that about Ron. They weren't saying that about Cho or Gabrielle. Yeah. I mean, mean, how long were Cedric and Cho dating? Yeah. yeah. Cause yeah. no, just as long as I'm sorry, quote, but they didn't really like dating. Well, and then someone pointed out the care. age difference between, um, Hermione and Crumb, but it's probably it's she's only three probably, years. Yeah, m- at most, you know what I mean? Because yeah. we don't know. Is he eighteen? He only has to be seventeen. She doesn't necessarily act her age either. Right. Well, yeah. So like he's either that, he's either yeah. like seventeen or eighteen at most, because you only have to be seventeen to enter this, and he's still in his last year of school, even though he is an international Quidditch player. So yeah, two I to three years. The is age not, doesn't. Yeah. Bother no, me. it doesn't bother me. Where am I at? From <laughs> big tangent, goodness. Oh, um, so Hermione said, What were you gonna do to snore at them? Um, so because of that, Ron's ears went red. Mm. Oh, that's too much. Sorry, you owe me a bell coke. And he went back to his original true story. <laughs> 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 so as they enter March, the weather becomes drier, but cruel winds skinned their hands and faces. Every time they went out into the grounds, that's some wicked wind. Mm -hmm. There were delays in the post because the owls kept being blown off course, which hurts my heart. Gotta keep Mm -hmm. picking inside. Mm -hmm. And the brown owl that Harry had sent to Sirius with the dates of the Hogsmeade weekend turned up at breakfast on a Friday morning with half its feathers sticking up the wrong way. How now, brown owl? (laughs) 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 Who let her take a sip of coffee? (laughs) Because it was me. I handed it to her. I apologize. (laughs) 
But Harry had no sooner torn off Sirius's reply than it took flight again, clearly afraid that it was going to be sent outside again. Oh, He's like, nah, hour. nah, man, I'm heading up to the Owry. <laughs> Not me this time. Mm-mm. I don't blame him. So the next letter from Sirius was super short, and it was right to the point. B at style. Style? Like a, like a fence. Like, a, like a post. A post. Oh. Maybe. That's what I pictured in my head. Cool. Um, at the end of the road out of Hogsmeade, past Dervish and Bangs, at 2 o'clock, pause, <laughs> on Saturday afternoon, bring as much food as you can. Oh. Katie would write this even if she had already eaten a meal that day. And Truth. Tiffany says it like she wouldn't do the same thing. I would. I'd say bring all the snacks. <laughs> all the all snacks. But the poor guy. I know. I no, really I know. Bad. He's one hungry pooch. He is. <laughs> Ron is in disbelief that Sirius actually came back to Hogsmeade, and so is Harry, and the anxiety is setting in. It's a very dangerous place for him to be. Harry's feeling anxious about Sirius putting himself in danger just to be near him. Like, yeah. here he goes him. placing the That's blame guilt. all on himself. Yeah. Like, this is just, this is what Harry does. Everything is my fault. I have to fix everything. And this is one of those um, occurrences. Harry thought about this. He really did want to see Sirius again. Of course, you can't blame him. And this afternoon, he has double potions. So sounds thrilling. He actually felt cheery as he approached the dungeon because he knew that he would be seeing his godfather soon. Outside the classroom doors, though, Malfoy and his uh, cronies were hanging out. They're huddled and they're laughing at something that Harry is unable to see. And Pansy Pugface Parkinson <laughs> That's some giggled and said, there they are, there they are. And then Harry saw something from a magazine from Witch Weekly. Who's on the cover? Which Not we- Lockhart. <laughs> <laughs> Who is he again? I don't remember. I don't <laughs> so Pansy throws the magazine at Harry, telling... Um, I'm sorry, throws it at Hermione, tells her that she would probably find this very interesting, but it's time for class to start. So while Snape is writing the ingredients on the board, I love it. What that he's writing it on the board? He's writing it? Well, that's he's telling it. you. He's telling you how to do it. It's not from the book. He's yeah. telling you. I love it. And that's why they said that people do better in his class than um, Slug- Slughorns, Slughorns because I'm he just- actually writes things like he did in the book of um, half blood prints like Does the actual write things yeah. in the book no you're just talking like a robot that's all yeah <laughs> he, <laughs> writes, he things. writes things on the board and he makes sure the students do it better than the book Beep, boop, bop, boop. <laughs> honestly though like it that makes me happy i agree so hermione whips out the issue and she finds what she's looking for but she's reading it under her desk and Ron and Harry uh, lean in, and here we go. A Oof. moment of silence for Harry's broken heart. Oh. Sips of sadness. <sighs> Such heartbroken. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> That's some sad coffee. Here we go. <laughs> That's some sad it's coffee. good coffee. It makes you oh, happy, not actually it. sad coffee. It's true. We're just sad sipping it. True. The sips, sips are sad. Sips of sadness. <laughs> Harry Potter's secret heartache. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, no. <laughs> so she writes, this is just random. She writes for the Witch Weekly and the Daily Prophet. I think that she's I kind think of like a freelance ed- writer. Yeah. She probably just like puts her you know, writings agreed, wherever agreed, she can. Agreed, agreed. I think that like if she, if this happened like nowadays, like she would totally have a Witch Weekly, like a witchy blog, you know? Oh my yeah. God. Oh my like, God. She would be like, did you guys ever follow Pink as the new blog? Like one of those, but like Rita style. Her Twitter would be outrageous. Her oh Twitter would be. Oh my God. <laughs> her Twitter would be lit. What were her she would be handle like, be? Shoot. Oh, <laughs> some tech lover in the Discord channel says, nah, she'd be on YouTube. Accurate. <laughs> she would be. <laughs> she yeah, true. Special like, correspondence from the second task of the Triwizard yeah. Tournament. Which beetle? <laughs> I'm trying to think of what. Bozo like. would be the editor. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! Her handler. I gotta think about that. Are you ready? Yes, we Sorry. can listen to the secret heartache. Okay, a boy like no other, perhaps yet a boy suffering all the usual pangs of adolescence, writes Rita Skeeter. Deprived of love since the tragic demise of his parents, fourteen-year-old Harry Potter thought he had found solace. <laughs> 
<laughs> and his steady girlfriend at Hogwarts. Mm, don't know why she adds this, but Muggleborn, Hermione Granger. Little did he know that he would shortly be suffering yet another emotional blow in the life of an already littered with personal loss. Miss Granger, a plain but ambitious girl, seems to have a taste for famous wizards that Harry alone cannot satisfy. Since the arrival at Hogwarts of Victor Crumb, Bulgarian Crumb, seeker Crumb, and hero Crumb. of the last World Quidditch Cup, Miss Granger has been toying with both boys' affections. Crumb, who is openly smitten with the devious Miss Granger, has already invited her to visit him in Bulgaria over the summer holidays and insists that he has, quote, never felt this way about any other girl. That's cute. Ooh. Crummy crumb. Ooh. However, I feel really bad for him. Me Sorry. Too. Well, yeah. What is the point of being an international Quidditch <laughs> star if all the girls are taken? It might not be Miss Granger's doubtful natural charms that have captured these unfortunate boys' interests. She's really ugly, says Pansy Parkinson, a pretty and vivacious fourth year student. But she'd be well up to making a love potion. She's quite brainy. I think that's how she's doing it. Love potions are are, of course, banned at Hogwarts, and no doubt Albus Dumbledore will want to investigate these claims. In the meantime, Harry Potter's well-wishers must hope that next time he bestows his heart on a worthier candidate. I just have some things to say about this. First of all, you're talking about kids, underage students. Children. Children. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like... You know, this just makes you look bad when you're reading this, you know, calling her just plain and ugly, whatever. But, like, I will say this. My mom would always tell me, and Hermione, like, does the same thing where she's like, I'm worried when they stop talking about me. So mm-hmm. go ahead. Write articles about me. Whatever. Don't Truthfully care. Though, go ahead. I was just going to say, good, f- good. it's good that Hermione has that mindset because of the success that she goes on to have in life, like later in general, like obviously these types of things are going to continue to be written about her because she becomes minister for magic and like everything, you know? So it's just like good that she has this mindset where Mm -hmm. she can just put it in the back of her mind and be like, you know what, whatever. I don't care. It's all just, it's, it's building her up for later in life. Well, and like when pants, like she's really ugly, like that makes you look bad. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Dana in the chat says, your heart is ugly, pansy. And I agree. <laughs> but also, like, this isn't just, like, trash gossip. This yeah. is, like, this is bullying. Yeah. To children. You're it a grown woman. Out, and you know what's crazy? Like, you see in the media nowadays, mm. every once in a while, where, like, kids are getting bullied online. Mm-hmm. And then it's, like, it sometimes they're getting bullied by students parents like correct you're a grown yep. human being yep. yeah. talking smack to a kid in high school or grade school like there's some things grow to, up there's something wrong with that yes you know what i'm saying absolutely like, like definitely that's well, not normal and i think too that i think that rita she does whatever she can to get the ratings mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. but i think that after after she pulls this, not this specific article, but just, you know, gobble to fire Rita, mm-hmm. she takes a step back after this and learns from it. Like the book, you mean? Yeah, just oh, after well, Goblet as a whole, because of Hermione, <laughs> she has yes. to like, you know, like, thank God Hermione does what she does and like well, puts her in line. I think that she underestimates Hermione. And two, oh, I think definitely. when she's, you know, because Hermione... Like we said, is not like the average fifteen year old. She's very smart and she's not afraid to speak her mind, but mm-hmm. she does it in a very intelligent, like emotionally mature way. Yes. So she's also probably like could be forgetting that she's only fifteen years old and in school. And then, you know, she does underestimate her when she, you know, at yeah. the end of this book. Don't mess with Hermione. And then you like sometimes I'll read like fan fictions and like they'll talk about Hermione, like you could totally be a Slytherin. You're like, you are kind of scary, you know, she, in a good way. Like, she's, she's not afraid to, like, stand ambitious. up for herself. You know what I mean? Yeah, mm-hmm. she's very Stand ambitious. up for herself and her friends. and Everybody has a little bit of all four houses in them, you know? Yeah. I agree. Mm-hmm. Tam says it's really sad that a 15-year-old has to keep a grown woman, a grown adult in check. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. And it's sad that you see that still happening in real-time life, so. Yeah, but honestly, it makes me think, like, when in the wizarding world are children really treated as such as children mm. true true children but a lot of the time 
they're, I feel like a lot is expected and the way that they're treated, especially, I don't know, in Hogwarts. I like, think we're also strict. seeing it from yeah. um, the, the Harry's perspective where he isn't, you know what I mean? He's not mm-hmm. treated as a kid, really. Well, I and think he the lost only time, a lot of that yeah. kiddom, you know what I mean? I think that he, um, really, the only person that we see mostly is like Molly trying to be like, you are kids, yeah. you know? And yeah, Harry should get to know he realistically should have known more about what was happening. Um, but she, at the same time, she being a mom wants to shield. I mean, cause we know, mm-hmm. and we're going to see later on in this book, like she sees Harry as her seventh son. So, <laughs> so she wants to shield like parents want to do that. They want to shield yeah. their kid from like the horribleness of the world as much as they can. And, you know, you sometimes can't do that as much as you want to. Um, but well, sometimes you go about it the wrong way too. We see later on in the book to go off of that, like in time of war, like there's no innocence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. There's no innocence left for them. I think that Molly, a lot of the times too, is always thinking in the back of her head, like what would Lily have wanted him to know? Yeah. 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 And, and, and it's hard because he's in such a weird situation, not having Lily or James, and being the person that he is in all of this, yeah. it's really hard to find that medium. Well, and I think too, um, median when when median. we go into like the fifth know. and the sixth book, where you know they're having those meetings and they're talking more, and you know they're they're talking about the Order of the Phoenix, and Harry wants to be a part of it. They also don't know everything. You know what I mean? Really, the only people that know the most are Snape and Dumbledore. You, yeah, you know. So yeah, it's it's like a balance of like how much should he know and how much do they know and how much you know it's like a touchy subject because you want she doesn't want anything to happen to any of them Mm -hmm. um so her intentions are good but you know they say the road to hell is paved with good intentions so yeah so after uh they read this article on the desk together ron's like i told you I love him. I told you she not to annoy Rita Skeeter. She's made you out to be some sort of scarlet woman. <laughs> <laughs> Hermione's reaction is perfect. She laughs Ron off uh, because of the scarlet woman thing. And she says, like, if that's the best thing that she could think to do, then she's losing her touch. Because Ooh. Witch Weekly also is a pile of old rubbish. I like that when the book, how he's like, well, that's what my mom calls it. So it's a little <laughs> bit of like a, cause we know that Molly takes this article to heart. Right. Um, yeah. Um, so she's Hermione smiles sarcastically at the Slytherins and she waves because they're all staring at her waiting for her, her to have like some Can you just crazy see her doing response. That? Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they wanted her to like flip out. Yeah. Yeah. But again, my mom literally always said, she goes, when they stop talking me, talking about me, she's like, that's not worry. Yep. She's like, because I'm that important that they have to talk about me. So in this potion class, they're making a wit sharpening potion. And if you go on the lexicon. It'll tell you that I invented it because I'm just so witty. Nope. No, just <laughs> that tea. Um, so it says it's presumably a potion to make the person think more clearly. Um, the ingredients are... I think that's scarab beetles, ginger roots, and armadillo bile. Is this Blue. like wizarding Adderall? <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> kind of like, did they yeah, use maybe. the holiday armadillo? I bile? don't know. They might have. Um, <laughs> but there's something funny about what Rita wrote because Hermione's wondering how Rita could have known that Crumb asked her to visit him over the summer. And she said that. Mm. Um, she said this as she was getting ready to smash up some of her scarab beetles. And I said, what are they? Do you ask? Let me tell you. Are those the things that um, in Indiana Jones? Yeah. That like crawled into their skins. That's yeah. the mummy. That is the mummy. Oh, but the yeah, mummy? that is yeah. what you're thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like in Egypt. It's like they're like yes, known to be in tombs or something. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I like it. There are approximately 30,000 species Blood. of beetles. That's what? too many. Um, they're compact, heavy, heavy-bodied insects with robustly oval outlines. What? That's 29,999 too many. Yep. They are distinguished from other beetles by their unusual antenna and, like, 
they have three flattened plates that fit together to form a club. Blah. I wonder how many stand on top, standing on top of each other would it take to make one Danny DeVito? <laughs> well, here, here you go. These beetles vary in length from five millimeters for the smaller species to Oh, gosh. Oh, don't tell me. <laughs> 12 centimeters, which oh. is 4.7 inches for the African Goliath beetle, oh, which is this. one of the heaviest known insects. I literally <sighs> want to throw up. I <laughs> Tim oh. just goes, that is rank. <laughs> Four like, and a half oh. inches. Yeah. Oh, over, well, over four and a half inches. Nah, right? bro. Makes me want to vomit. Nah. Aww. You're welcome, everyone. Thanks. I literally Today. got like a chill You're through welcome. me thinking about how big that is. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that little science lesson. I didn't at all. So, moving on. Ron asks if she has been mixing up some love potion. Oh, really my Ron? God. But Rita... Did get th- something right in her article. So Crumb definitely did ask her to visit because there's no way uh, Rita would have known this otherwise because she's been banned from the ground. So this is where Hermione is like, mm, something's not right. Not and I come. also think it's interesting that they're like smashing beetles and she's going <gasps> to smash Rita pretty much. Yes. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. yes. I, like I like that Ron's like, he wants you to visit. <laughs> well, here we go. So Ron says, quote, and what did you say? Said Ron, who had picked up his <laughs> pestle and was grinding it on the desk <laughs> a good six inches from his bowl because he was looking at Hermione. <laughs> so he's like this. <laughs> I wonder, oh, go ahead, Katie. Then I want to say That's something. That's a good uh, beetle's length from his bowl. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, I, good. I wonder if he's um, like thinking in the back of his head being like, I'll never be able to compete with like an international oh, like, yeah, star. For sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I mean, and it's I'm super sure intimidating. That we already know, like think to Deathly Hollows when like one of his biggest fears that the Horcrux takes advantage of is him like thinking that him and Hermione are, or Ron and Hermione are, Harry and Hermione <laughs> are. <laughs> his biggest fear is that him and her, Hermione are together. I don't want it to happen. Him. <laughs> Harry and Hermione are together. Well, so, like, like of my course mom, she thinking, can't figure out who she's talking I to. I can't compete with those. Well, and I know with, and we've talked about this, and I think that's something that people tend to forget. First of all, that they're kids, but that Ron um, doesn't always see himself in the best light. Yeah. And he does think, like, why wouldn't she want to be with the international liquid star? Like, what do I have to offer her, you know? Why wouldn't why she want to be with Harry? Be the why chosen wouldn't one. she want to be with Crumb? Yeah. 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 Mm. Ron, you're what am I to them Ron, is what he's she thinking. She wants to get married to you and share toffees with you later in life. It's all good. And have yeah. a rose. And a Hugo. Well, clearly Ron, her uh, rolling doesn't care about Hugo. <laughs> doesn't make an appearance <laughs> later on. He was mentioned in Cursed Child, he wasn't was, he? Yeah. You know who wasn't? Teddy Lupin, but that's another story. Oof. Wasn't um, he mentioned a little bit at all once? I don't know. I think just briefly. He should have been in it. Oh, so Danny DeVito is anywhere from 240, <laughs> 274 to 295 scarab beetles based on tips numbers. <laughs> Thank you, Dana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so Ron's smashing his desk and Hermione's like still like kind of like thinking this out. And she's like, and he did say he'd never felt the same way about anyone else. She's going red now that Harry... And Ron are like looking at her like, okay. And she, he can almost feel the heat coming off of her. <laughs> but how could Rita Skeeter have heard him? She wasn't there. Or was she? Maybe she's got an invisibility cloak. Maybe she sneaked onto the grounds to watch the second task. That's exactly what happened minus the cloak. And then Ron presses her again and asks, and asks her like what her response was to staying like with him over the summer. But she never had a chance to answer because she was too worried about the boys. She doesn't go though, does she? No, that we know. I don't think she does. I don't think she. But we do know that they are. They do talk. They write. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a lot to stay with someone you you just met. Yeah, not just met, but you know what I'm saying. Especially if you're that young. I mean, I was gonna say she is also young. Yeah. My parents wouldn't have let me go for sure. I don't think my parents would let me go now, and I'm 29. That's great. Well, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Your mom would kick you out of the house. All right. 
So, <laughs> uh, so yes, the boys are about to get in trouble. The Actually, all three trouble. of them are about to get in trouble because Snape is a jerk, and he comes over and takes ten points from Gryffindor because they're discussing gossip. He then spots which I weekly, mean, but they are, they are. But was, like, to be fair, they were also preparing their ingredients. Like, I'm just saying, like, were you just gonna like sit there in silence? I agree. Chat. Like, think about when you were like in school, <laughs> chemistry. Yes, that's exactly what I was yeah. thinking. I'm like, you're doing your things, you're measuring stuff, and you're chatting and with you're your chatting. your person next to you, or the people around Snape you. Yeah, maybe you being. pour some acid on someone. You shouldn't be talking while you're trying to work in chemistry. Calm I did everything I perfectly <laughs> in chemistry, and I talked the whole time. I'm sure we, you did. I was there. We surprised. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, so then he spots Witch Weekly and takes another ten points. He's just jealous because he never got um, the best smile thing. He wants to be the cover girl. <laughs> Well, he should probably begin with washing his hair. Can someone please draw us a picture of him um, <gasps> as the cover on girl on which, which week? Oh, oh, oh my god, god. The cover dude! <laughs> I'm trying no. to think of a fancier word instead of just like cover man. Cover man, cover man. All right, cover boy. He starts, that sounds like a superhero. <laughs> so then <laughs> he starts reading the article out loud, pausing at the end of each sentence for full effect from the Slytherins. Kind of how I read it. Yeah, I was going to, well, I was going to read it, but I didn't realize that you had put it in yours. Thanks Um, for, uh, you know, not doing your notes the day of the recording. I don't read your notes anyway, Tiffany. I love you so much. Shots have been fired. (laughs) Tiffany. (laughs) Words have been said. But he does interject a couple of his own thoughts while he's reading it. So... He says in the beginning, a further 10 points from Gryffindor. Oh, but of course, Potter has to keep up with his press cuttings. I mean, it's true. Dear, dear (sighs) Potter, what's ailing you now? Uh, Oh, boy. And so even Hermione is blushing scarlet as he reads. He's pausing at the end of every sentence so that the Slytherins have a chance to laugh. Why are you guys laughing? As a class, level. because of how he's reading it, and because of the Slytherins' reactions, like the article sounds ten times worse whenever it's being read, and Hermione is just scarlet. And She's I almost like woman. what I hate is that. The Slytherins thought they were going to get a reaction out of Hermione, and she's like snarky and doesn't give it to them. But then Snape makes sure that they get that moment, and it just... It's horrible. It irks me. It's horrible. It irks me. And then to top it all off, he separates them Mm. and has Hermione go sit next to Pansy. Perfect combo there. Harry has to be by himself right in front of Snape's desk, and Ron stays in the back by himself. So Harry takes his time gathering everything up, goes to the front, unloads everything, and is just determined not to look at Snape the entire time. That's is like that's just seriously so me whenever I'm really mad. I just like avoid eye contact and I'm like no, I don't don't even want to look at you. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. No. So, can I just say how unprofessional this next part is with Snape though? Like yeah. this just irks me so he pulls him like I mean he like puts him in this spot so that he's all by himself and then he is basically calling him out on something that Harry honest to God didn't do but of course Snape's not going to you know believe that um so Snape says all this press attention seems to have inflated your already over large head Potter and Harry just is trying to ignore him as he should Um, But then he continues and says, you might be laboring under the delusion that the entire wizarding world is impressed with you. Snape went on so quietly that no one else could hear him. Harry continued to pound his scarab beetles, even though he had already reduced them to a very fine powder. But I don't care how many times your picture appears in the papers. To me, Potter, you are nothing but a nasty little boy who considers rules to be beneath him. Um, So I give you a fair warning, Potter. Pint-sized celebrity or not, if I catch you breaking into my office one more time, and then Harry has forgotten that he was pretending not to listen at this point and says, I haven't been anywhere near your office. And then Snape says that he's lying um, and then lists off Boom Slang Skin as something that is missing or that has been taken and Gillyweed. 
Harry legitimately didn't take the gillyweed, and Harry right. didn't know where the gillyweed came from that Dobby got. It but really looks like he did, though. Yeah. We're assuming probably that Dobby took this out of Snape's office. Or I would, wonder, do you think Dobby it, punished himself? But do you think it was Moody. Moody taking it and giving it to Dobby to give Possibly. to Harry? Mm-hmm. That's what like, I thought. But like, what would he say to Dobby? Do you think he would be like? He probably was like, "I can't give this to Harry, but you can." And go Dobby's give it totes to him. cool with like, yeah, because oh, yeah. Dobby yeah. will do anything for Harry. Not care. What if Moody was like, Harry will die in the lake if you don't give this to him? You know what I'm saying? Oh, Dobby yeah. would jump on it. He'd be yeah. like, hey, yes. Um, so he says, both of those are from my private stores, and I know that you stole them. And so, yeah, so they're talking about the gillyweed or whatever, and Harry's like, I don't know what you're talking about. But Harry's also assuming that he means, like, back from second year, I think, because they did oh, steal so? Boom Slang skin. Did I because then I was like, oh, does he mean back then? But then but I was thinking, I'm like, to think. but he is stealing it. Um, I guess maybe that was like the connection she was potentially using. Because I think we also get confused. Like in the movie, he's like, you don't think I know what's missing? And he names more than one ingredient to right. Right. Yeah. yeah, he um, does. But I mean, I think Moody, in my opinion, I think he stole both of these things this time around. Right. Yeah. But that's what we're, I think that's what we're supposed to lead yes. to be to believe so that, that later on we're like, yeah. oh my God, no, it was Moody stealing uh-huh. from this year for Polly's right. potion. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. So Snape says, I don't know. Or <laughs> Harry says, I don't know what you're talking about. Snape says, you were out of bed on the night my office was broken into. I know it, Potter. Now, Mad-Eye Moody might have joined your fan club, but yeah. I will not tolerate your behavior. One more nighttime stroll into my office, Potter, and you will pay. Like, pay how? I just, he's so overdramatic. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like can't there be like a spell to like see who's in I your would office? Like think a, so, like mm-hmm. a something like a homo revelio, like a yeah, burglar yeah, yeah, yeah. alarm like of some sort, you know? One that's like yeah. who was in here? Yeah, kind of like what Newt did too. Yes, exactly like what that's Newt what I did. I was thinking, yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. But and maybe you have to know who you're looking for. But, so if he does that and is thinking Harry, it's not going to work. Yeah. But then he would know Harry wasn't there. I don't know. But like, why Why doesn't Harry just be like, I saw Crouch on... Oh, well, he doesn't want him to know he is the map. I answered that myself. Or that he was yeah. out. Yeah, because yeah, that would mean that... <laughs> right. Yeah, but he could also have been like, I was laying in bed looking at my map that shows me everything in Hogwarts. And uh, <laughs> Crouch was crouching So I had around. this magical map, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and it says that Barney Crouch was actually in there. And it said that you were... We're in the loo. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're um, having alone time with Dumbledore. <laughs> so Harry is just like so chill here. He's like, right. I'll bear that in mind if I ever get the urge to go in there. Like trying clearly to make Sassy. it be known that he's never been in there. Um, and then Snape shows him Veritaserum. And he, he threatens yeah. Harry here, which again, like, I'm sorry, but that's just messed up. And Harry thinks all of the things that he could spill if Snape actually does give him that potion. And he's thinking, well, he'll get Hermione and Dobby in trouble for helping him with the tournament. Uh, go ahead. No, I'm just thinking with the Veritas Serum, not only do we see it later on in this book with um, Umbridge. Junior, but Umbridge. like, Because yeah. he's like, it's very controlled with the, the ministry. ministry and all of that stuff. But she uses it on everybody. Well, because she's the ministry and she's I wonder. I wonder it. if she's like, I wonder she's if I can like, ask them if they like me, if they'll tell me yes. You guys, how am I no. going to get through the next book with her? Oh, my oh. God. This is going to be like, hard. Like, we're going to be so like, think of, angry. Think of people that, like, we're going to be like get Harry. annoyed yes. that we don't like Snape. Oh. Uh, like, well, I don't think like, anybody oh, will be annoyed that we don't no. like Outbridge. <laughs> I'm just thinking we're all, every episode, we're going to be like, oh, my Umbridge. God, I hate her. <laughs> yeah. We're like, Dumbridge. <laughs> Wow. I to think that was bro- from your Hufflepuff guy. <laughs> I have to think of a good name to call her. Except so, like Umbridge. Like, that woman. Trash. Uh, oh, wait, that's uh, Tiffany. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put me on the same level. As her. Uh, pond scum. Oh, between my toes. Jam. Pond scum jam. <laughs> uh, so Harry's also <laughs> really worried <laughs> about Rolling. spilling the beans uh, about Sirius. What kind of beans? Well, some... Magical beans. <laughs> magical beans. <laughs> magical beans. <laughs> the more you eat, the more you toot. The more you toot, the better you feel. So eat your beans with every meal. 
<laughs> and he's also, for whatever reason, the thoughts of like how he feels about Cho come up in his mind too. So he like gets more nervous about that than I spilling know. it on Sirius and Hermione and Dobby. I don't know. So yeah. Um. So after he's thinking all of these things, and Snape goes back to his desk and is doing what Snapes do at desks, Cockeroff comes in. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's another Doctor Seuss book. What do Snapes <laughs> Snapes do? Snapes at death. <laughs> So Cockroft immediately comes in and tells Snape that they need to talk. This is gutsy. It is. Yeah. Why are you coming? This is class. way of class. This well, is here's way why. too. But he's I mean, panicked. I get it. He's panicked. I get he is it. He is scared. not thinking. No, dude. No, he's Oof. really scared. So he comes in in the middle of class and says they need to talk. And Snape says, um, "No, we'll talk later. I have class right now, as you can clearly see." And Cockroft says, "Uh, no." Now, I will not let you slip away from me again because I'm thinking that he's probably been trying for a while to yeah. talk to him. So Kakarov stayed in the room until the lesson ended, just like lurking Hovering. awkwardly behind Snape. Well, we do know that he was trying to talk to him um, during the, ball. the Eagle Ball. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, Why do you think Snape was trying to avoid that? I don't, because I don't think he, he wanted others know. to know. They were I think alone. That, I think that he's worried about yeah, but like giving he, something away to Cockeroff because he doesn't really know Cockeroff and he doesn't know where Cockeroff is yeah. or how to act in front yeah. of him. But I also you know? doesn't know that, which like, side to play. He, yeah. he obviously, you since we're seeing this from Harry's point of view, he's seeing them have conversations. It's not alone. You know what I mean? Mm. So he's not going to have this conversation when he sees students around. And I think you're not coming to my classroom during class. We're not having this conversation now. I'm just wondering about the ball. Cause presumably they were, they were outside. He was catching students snogging. Yeah. They're, they're snogging, not eavesdropping. You know what I'm saying? But you never know. People could be snogging fakely to eavesdrop. Well, that's on the teachers, but like, it just makes me interested because I feel like he would have played the side that he's good, the side he's playing now, right? At Hogwarts and everything because that's where he's at. But, like, even if he were to go back like he did saying, you idiot, I was being a double agent, whatever. Do you think that a lot of the students know Snape's past, though? No. Yeah, I think the Slytherins do. Well, oh. yeah, but I'm talking like the other three houses. And you think they know that he's a Death Eater? He's not is. Well, Malfoy's got a mouth. Yeah, I, but does he know? I don't think it's a secret. I think Malfoy knows because Lucius would I know. think everybody knows everybody's business oh, in I think the Wizarding World. And I think that if somebody's I mean, kid it wasn't was at a Hogwarts, trial. they would I mean, I guess, say. I guess people do know. I don't know. I just think that like... Um, I would think that Snape wants to make sure that it doesn't get brought up a bunch, though. But uh, maybe he's also just... Out of respect. He's just yeah. um, used to kind of playing both sides, and he's just going to, like, remain, as you said, like, aloof as possible to see how he's going to have to react, because he knows. Like, he's not dumb. They all know Voldemort's coming back. So maybe he's like, I have to make sure that, like, I can slip, unfortunately slip back into that role of really, truly being a double agent, so I'm just going to do... I'm, this is how I'm going to act. I was going to say that maybe he's still kind of confused as to how to act because he hasn't really had to be a true double agent for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. True. So like this is it's it's almost new right now. Mm-hmm. Like oh shoot, I have another death eater in my presence all the time and I also have Dumbledore in my presence all the time. Well, and then well, there's Moody too who right, he doesn't who know is a death eater, yeah. like a dark wizard catcher yeah. and he thinks it's actually Moody. So I think that he's just kind of like on edge about it. So he just doesn't want, I don't know. <laughs> Tam says, you think they know that we know that they know that we know we know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so Harry is here. He heard this go on. So he deliberately spills his armadillo bile and takes his time cleaning it up at the end of class. Smart. And Kakaroff immediately goes up to Snape at his desk, pulls up his left arm sleeve, and shows Snape something. Harry can't see what it is, but he knows that that's what, you know, like that's what he's doing. And Snape immediately is just like, put that away. What are you doing? Put um, your arm away. I don't want to <laughs> see it. I don't like forearms. Thank you. <laughs> so Kakarov leaves and looks worried 
as Snape is asking Harry like what he's doing and why he's taking so long. So Harry, you know, just tells him, "Oh, I spilled my armadillo bile, Professor. I'm cleaning it up." And then as soon as he's finished, he hurries off to tell Hermione and Ron what he just witnessed because I'm guessing he's thinking in his mind. They might have an idea of what he showed him. Yeah, but like later on in the chapter, Sirius doesn't even like think to that it would be the dark mark. He's like, I wonder what that's about. You didn't know? Like they all have their yeah. tattoos on their right left Maybe arm. Maybe he's just a little bit off because he hasn't eaten. Is that? <laughs> but is that something that's not known? Are those secret? His brother was a Death Eater, though. Like I feel like I feel like they might not be known. known. I don't know. That's a good question. But. Can we draw real world ex- stuff? Like some people get certain things tattooed on them in secret and they don't show anybody. So you don't know what they're really affiliated with. Yeah, but they're usually in parts of their body that are easily concealable. Like I have tattoos on my arms. That, people like, are always wearing wizard robes with long sleeves. I mean, yeah, I guess. I, I think they're secret. I until can, we, until we find evidence way. otherwise. I think that they're secret. Yeah. But it is kind of interesting that... Wait, Sirius... Yeah, he was part of the Order. Wouldn't you think the Order would have... Would have known about it? Yeah, because they were like, you know... Are they really that secret then? Well, and plus, like, you would think that if Snape was a double agent, he would have told the Order, and then Sirius would have known, because yeah. that would have been information that Snape would have told them. Or did he just leave it out completely? I but was Snape in the order the first time? But like, but think about at the end of the book where he goes, where Junior even says to know. like, sh- uh, like show me yours and I'll show you mine kind of thing. And he's talking about his left arm with Harry mm-hmm. and like Dumbledore knows. Cause he's like, show him your left arm, like show him your arm. Like he knows that it's there. Um, my question is with Karkaroff and I kind of forgot what I wanted to ask. Um, <laughs> like, because we know that he's like afraid. Does he like regret? You think? Does he just not want to be a part of yeah. Voldemort's uprising, or is he like? Because at the end of the book, he runs away. Is he running away because he doesn't want to have to um, probably get punished for Karkaroff? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, they yeah. would have killed him. Oh yeah. Yeah. He, he, he gave information. Voldemort would have. Voldemort killed him. would have killed him, Voldemort would have killed him or he would have had somebody else kill him. Oh, and yeah. it, and in the graveyard, I'm pretty sure that he alludes to the fact that he will kill him. What about the other ones that? There were gaps, and he was yeah, saying, and he, he was he was people, talking about that. But that. some of them are the people in will have to answer for why they're not here, or they yeah. will pay the price. Yeah, and like I know that some of them are in jail, um, right? Like Bellatrix. Right. So it's interesting to me that it's not like some super magical thing where they can just like go. You know what I mean? That would be cool. Like you if, about them in Azkaban. Yeah. Well, no. If like, like if you, the dark mark is summoned. Yeah. Oh, like it doesn't just snap you. Like it just like takes you there. That'd I wonder like good. how painful that is. <laughs> that would they be really like, cool, but that would be terrifying because how do you contain anyone? What if you're like mid bathroom trip? <laughs> That's what I was just thinking. What if you like fly off the toilet? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. You always oh, got to get a good bathroom joke in the episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we know that Regulus was a Death Eater, wasn't he? Right. Yeah. And I don't we think- knew he was, but he regretted it. Snape, end, I don't think Snape was life. officially in the order, though, the first time. Um, people are suggesting so. that he was in the order when he found out about the prophecy. So he wasn't until he found out about that. Yeah, but would they actually put him but then in how the order long? or was he just working with the order? I think he was probably order. just working yeah. Yeah, I don't think he was. I don't think he was in it, but I'm not 100% on that. It's yellow. Oh, okay. Yellow. Yellow, yellow. yellow. I know. So the next day, they head to Hogsmeade. So it's Hogmead? serious day. Excuse me, it's Hogsweed. It's Hogsweed. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, so they snuck a bunch of food for Sirius. So they have a dozen chicken legs, a loaf of bread, and a flask of pumpkin juice. They have some seriously good food. To Dude, get I, yeah. I could eat a chicken leg right now, and a loaf of bread, I and a flask. Of definitely juice. eat a loaf I of bread. I don't care for pumpkin <laughs> things, but I would eat some chicken thighs. I enjoy thighs. chicken thighs. Um, why they lies? They only brought chicken legs, not what? thighs. Yeah, but I like a good dark meat. I like the white meat. Mm. Aren't the but chicken I don't legs even dark now. meat too? Yeah, <laughs> I, like, I like the breast. All they right, are. chicken breast. Yeah. So they stop at Glad Rags Wizard Wear. Which can you go to that? And was in? The, I don't even remember that being a thing. Is um, that in Hogsmeade? Like, Is it like it's just a, a storefront? It's a front. It's a storefront, right. but you can't go in it. That's right. Because then they opened Madame Milken's. Madam Melkins and Diagon Alley. 
Maybe they I'll should get open some. another one. Do you Come think on. that Swish can buy me robes? Uh, Let's all buy robes. I don't have Hufflepuff ones. Can we just Marty said get through the whole iPad debacle? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a uniform. That was it. It's a uniform. I like it. What if they're not your color? It's a uniform. We need I would it. I would wear those because it's mostly black. Like the whole thing is black and then most of the other colors are Guys, I think tell it'd be us. cool if Should we, we buy had robes? All, all had our house robes. Should we okay, buy robes? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> who's I won't who's be with taking those right back around. on the plane? <laughs> Sarah. You used to have to come. <laughs> oh, I wish, but it's not going to happen. Hmm. Tam says to buy robes. I I thought that was like I don't know why it's squeaky. I need to get like some WD forty. Yeah. So the reason they're at Glad Rags is because they need to pick out a present for Dobby. So they Hmm. have a bunch of fun picking out all these crazy socks. There's a pair with flashing gold, Megan, (laughs) and silver. Sorry, that is me going crazy. That was unnecessary. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) That was obnoxious. I'm an obnoxious human being. I'm obnoxious. <laughs> it's true though. What is that? What is sea animal is that? Finding I know. What sea animal is that? Uh, what sea animal? Yeah, what's an anemone? <laughs> no, it's a fish. fish. The dumb fish. Dumb fish. <laughs> yeah, one of the fish a Dumbridge fish. <laughs> I'm H two O intolerant. <laughs> Is there something that I quote from you all the time? I feel oh, like you guys made me, made me ink. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling your friend the other day about um, how, like, sometimes, like, oh, fish eggs. I was like, there weren't any on there. He's like, you don't know. And I was like, no, I really do because the smoked salmon thing. I was like, we're eating little Nemos. Oh, oh my God. <sighs> anyway, these socks had flashing gold and silver stars. And then another that screamed loudly when they got too smelly. <laughs> They Mag- would be one day of me wearing socks. Mag, yours would be screaming <laughs> within okay, an okay. hour. So they head up the high street and they see a very large, shaggy black dog. <laughs> what do you think the socks scream? <laughs> Watch me! I'm, I'm smelly! smelly. <laughs> Jinx, you owe me a Coke. Jinx. Jinx. Do you do that with a burp? I don't have to burp right now. Well, we'll have to try it later. I'm on. not going to push one out. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, Sirius wagged his tail. I know. A quality pooch. A quality pooch. <laughs> and he leads them to the foot of a mountain, and they climb for almost half an hour. That's crazy. Before they finally get to like this cave he's been staying in. And Buckbeak is there. Oh, good old Beaky. Mm-hmm. Beaky booka booka boo. Poor Sirius is wearing the same ragged gray robes that he was wearing when he left Azkaban. You'd think he'd like steal some out of like a laundromat or something. I don't think you know? he cares. Yeah, yeah I don't think he doesn't. cares. He I needs think he... robes that scream when they're too smelly. <laughs> <laughs> that would just be constant yelling, and I think he would be found out. <laughs> his location would be found quick. True. <laughs> Um, His black hair was longer than it was when Harry saw him in the fire when they talked earlier in the book, and it was untidy and matted once again. It was mad. It was so shiny. (laughs) Um, It was matted once again, and he also looked very thin. Poor guy. But he's stoked about that chicken. (laughs) (laughs) He starts inhaling it because he's been living off rats. That's disgusting. Uh, I asked in the book in my notes, I'm like, do you think that he envisions each rat he eats his worm tail? (gasps) Oh! Oh. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> I'm so in. <laughs> oh my god. That is savage. <laughs> oh my god. I mean it's serious. I know. You know? <laughs> yeah. Seriously savage. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Harry is Harry. Were you gonna say something? Mm-mm. He's like, serious. Why are you here? What if they catch you? What if you're seen? Sirius is like, it's fine. Like, your last letter concerned me. I need to be here. Things are getting fishier. <laughs> They're getting mer people. You're spelling <laughs> yeah. a lot of things wrong. Slast. Concerned. <laughs> 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 At least I can read it. I can read my own typing. Okay. You, here you go. Um, and he's like, look, you guys and Dumbledore are the only ones that know that I'm an animagus. Like, I'm just pretending to be a stray. It's fine. Um, so Harry looks at one of the papers that Sirius had been carrying in his mouth. Again, adorable. Someone draw that. Uh, one of the headlines is Mysterious Illness of Bartimus Crouch. I, and another I, is... I've been drawn. That's the chapter art. <laughs> 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 oh, too shiny. <laughs> 
I want it like super cute. Okay, I need someone else it to draw is it. Cute. Like I a need it. Are you saying food. that, that is Mary a, Grand a Prey oh, that does is not cute. draw quality pooches? I just want to uh, see another uh, artist. Do you see a chicken leg? She wants. She would like to see it in color. Yeah. Even though he's a black dog. <laughs> <laughs> and I need to see a typically it's black and white. They're yellowed. It says that in here. They're black and white and red all over. Uh, and the other article is me. Ministry <laughs> Witch Still Missing, Minister of Magic Now Personally Involved. Hmm. So he scans the story about Crouch. He hasn't been seen since November. Whoa. The house appears deserted. St. Muggo's St. Muggo's St. Muggo's <laughs> declined to comment and the ministry refuses to confirm any rumors of him having a critical illness. So there's some stuff going on with Crouch. Which we there obviously knew. Is- oh, never mind. So Harry says, they're making it sound like he's dying. And Hermione says, well, he's getting his comeuppance for sack and winky. <laughs> <laughs> but he feels the difference now she that she's not there to take savage. care of him. She's savage. <laughs> I love it. That's, like this is like, that's what he gets for like sacking his elf and he can't take care of himself. Literally, that's what I would have said if I was sitting next to them in this moment. Well, yeah. I would have been like, well, he deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sirius is really interested in the whole, like, Winky getting sacked, though. So Harry, like, runs down what happened at the World Cup. And Sirius is like, well, when, like, he started asking about them being in the top box and um, maybe someone took Harry's wand while they were up there. Maybe he didn't just lose it as they were running out of there. Um, so they go through everyone who was there. So here's our suspects. We have Winky. We got the Bulgarian ministers. We have Fudge, the Malfoys, which immediately Ron's like, yeah, it was them for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Ludo Bagman, who we know is shady. And we find out more shadiness about him later. Um, and Sirius doesn't like the sound of Bagman continuously asking Harry to basically cheat. Um, so Sirius asks what Crouch did when Winky was found holding Harry's wand. And... We know that Crouch checked the bushes because he was looking for Junior, which we don't know now, but we find out later. Yes, sir. I just like how in this section when he's talking and he he's kind of like thinking in a different way. He's like, oh, did you not have it when you left? And he's like, and there was an empty chair. Like, you're thinking along the, the, like the right yeah, lines. Yeah. Like, you're, you're so close to getting it right. Um, and it helps them think of like, you know, a different perspective of, how Winky got the wand and all that other stuff. Right. Yeah, he's definitely on the right path, but, like, it's something so crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that it's it's pretty mind-blowing how close he is. Yeah. Because it just goes to show, like, how Sirius's brain is, like, perfect for the Order. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I feel like he could have been, like, an Order if he wanted to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's so sad. Yeah. Uh, uh, when we like get to sad. those later things, I'm gonna like really cry a lot. So Yeah. Just just enjoy our time uh, now. Yeah. Well it's I mean, uh, it's getting darker, but it's still a little lighthearted. Yeah. Um so Sirius says, Yeah, of course he'd want to pin it on anyone but his own elf. And then we get the famous line, if you want to know what a man's like, take a good look at how he treats his inferiors, Love not it. his equals. Whoa. Sirius should take his advice right there. I, I agree. A thousand percent agree. People say that all the time. I agree. That's not because yeah. that's why he died. I agree. A should be nice for a creature. Yep. And we kind of run through the whole like Crouch's story really doesn't add up. So he goes through the trouble of having Winky save him a seat at the cup, but then he doesn't turn up and watch. Uh, he works super hard to get the Triwizard Tournament going, and then he doesn't even come to that. And Sirius is like, if he's ever taken a day off of work because of illness before this, I'll eat Buckbeak. Because he's just like such a sh- stickler for the rules, and he just, mm. he seems like one of those people who would like never, even if he's on his deathbed, like he's going to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Harry's like, do you know Crouch? <laughs> And instantly, Sirius's whole demeanor just changes because Crouch is the one who sent him to Azkaban without a trial. That's horrendous. Yeah. yeah. But I wonder at the same time, like, because when, when Harry first meets Sirius anyways, he's like, it's my fault. And he, like, he blames all of that on himself anyways. So what if he, what he said, he's would he have said he was guilty anyways? You know what I mean? Like, would he have sent himself to Azkaban? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I guess maybe, but still. Yeah. It's so awful. Apparently, Crouch used to be the head of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement, and he was also pretty much pegged to be the next Minister of Magic before Fudge because he's 
he is a very powerful magical wizard, but he's also very power hungry. Hmm, um, what does that kind of sound like? Grindelwald. Dumbledore Grindelwald. and Grindelwald, honestly. Mm. Does Let's anything a Grindelwald man. does. <laughs> he knows. Is he powerful? He knows yes, that he he's is. power hungry. Who, Dumbledore? Yeah, he yeah. admits it. Yeah. Power recognizes but he, power. He chooses things mm-hmm. that... Um, <laughs> Or like so he can't you know what I mean? He doesn't he doesn't like to <laughs> enable himself. Right. And um, then when he does, he just, he gets sick and he gets poisoned in his hand, and then he dies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was. I really wish that everybody could have seen it. Was like a, it was now. like a it was like a robot arm. <laughs> and no, then I mean. he dies. <laughs> Who Dead dies? Robot. <laughs> then he gets sick in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what temptation of the God. ring Speaking that horcrux got him good so we also find out from Sirius that um, as power hungry as Crouch is he was never a Voldemort supporter he's actually very outspoken against the dark side <laughs> dark, dark side, side. Uh, but quote but then a lot of people who were against the dark side well you wouldn't understand you're too young and I am rotten here because Ron's like listen, like, just try us, won't you? Like, we're not too young. It makes him think of his dad at the World Cup. Mm-hmm. I, I, again, this makes me think of a lot of kids these days who are just underestimated, and mm-hmm. they're the ones that have all the power to change the world. Yeah. Like, I don't we'll care how young you are. When they're like, oh, they're just kids. Yep. Yeah, in six months to a year, they'll be voting kids. So right. you might want to be careful how, what you say to them and how you treat them. Ooh, right. get ready, get ready. Mm-hmm. IJS. Get ready, get ready. I'm pretty excited, but let's move on. (laughs) Let's talk about Death Eaters and Bad Wizards. (laughs) Bad Wizards? Bad Wizards. (laughs) Are they good? No, No, they're they're not. not. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why I sing these songs. She's been doing it literally for like two days straight. Three uh, days, Because really. you made me do it the one night, and it's been stuck in my life for Literally, the rest of my life. But I don't think you realize how much you do it all the time. <laughs> At least every time I see her, she's Tiffany. Tiffany. Yeah. Is she cool? <laughs> no, she's not. I think it, it started with Fozzie, because I call him Fozzington. I'm like, Fozzington? Fozzington does whatever a Fozzington does. I sing it to Ted. Is yeah, we cool? sing it to Teddy all yeah, the time. Teddy Bear. Teddy bear does whatever a teddy bear does. <laughs> Chases a mouse. Round the house. <laughs> Cuddles his moms. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to read a little bit from um, the chapter because I like how she <laughs> says these things. What do you say? Look at the chat. <laughs> <laughs> so I put a spider big gif. <laughs> Vinny coming in clutch. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's just so funny. Spider pig. Spider pig. Can he swing from a web? No, he can't. He's a pig. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. <sighs> Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Goff. <gasps> You'll make <Whoa. laughs> Episode 27. <laughs> the Return of the Pooch. <laughs> So Sirius, it says, a grin flashed across Sirius's thin face. All right, I'll try you. He walked up to the cave back again and then said, imagine that Voldemort's powerful now. You don't know who his supporters are. You don't know who's working for him and who isn't. You know he can control people so that they do terrible things without being able to stop themselves. You're scared for yourself and your family and your friends. Every week, news comes of more deaths, more disappearances, more torturing. The Ministry of Magic's in disarray. They don't know what to do. They're they're trying to keep everything hidden from the muggles, but meanwhile, muggles are dying too. Terror everywhere. Panic, confusion. That's how it used to be. Well, times like that bring out the best in some people and the worst in others. Um, So Crouch's principles might have been good in the beginning. I wouldn't know. He rose quickly through the ministry, and he started ordering very harsh measures against Voldemort's uh, supporters. The Aurors were given new powers, powers to kill rather than capture, for instance. And I wasn't the only one who was handed straight to the Dementors without trial. <clears throat> Crouch fought violence with violence and authorized the use of the f- unforgivable curses against suspects. 
I would say he became a ru- as ruthless and cruel as many on the dark side. He had his supporters, mind you. Plenty of people thought he was going about things the right way. And there were a lot of witches and wizards clamoring for him to take over as minister of magic. <clears throat> yes. The whole giving them the go ahead to kill makes me think of the American orders back yeah. in the day where yeah. they didn't think. Like in they the 20s? Just, yeah, they just killed. Yeah. It's like regression. Even, <clears throat> yeah. Even, even now in real life, how um, yep. some people are mm-hmm. trained to shoot to kill when you could, you know. Try to the situation. Yes. So, um, as I said, like Crouch was basically like a tit for tit with the dark side um, of the war, fighting violence with violence. When for me, like that's never the answer. Um, and he was all primed to become the next minister of magic with a lot of supporters behind him. Um, and then his own son was caught being involved with the Death Eaters. So then <clears throat> Sirius kind of goes and I wouldn't say gives advice to Barty because obviously, like a little too late, but. Basically says, you know, he's like, uh, nasty little shack for old Barty, I'd imagine. Should have spent a bit more time at home with his family, shouldn't he? Ought to have left the office early once in a while, gotten to know his own son. Um, you know, seen where his interests were and all of that. Yeah. I like what Vinny said in the chat that this is kind of our first instance in the Harry Potter universe where the story is becoming less black and white Mm. than it was before. So like he's the first evil guy quote on the right side Mm -hmm. Um, because, and and it just shows that you can be on the right side of history and still not make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. So to just kind of, sometimes you have to take a step back from what you're doing and, think about think about what you're doing and make sure that you're making the right decisions. Yeah. There can absolutely. be extremes on both sides. On any, both sides, any absolutely. Side. And yeah. there usually are. And then unfortunately, the the people that are the extremists are the ones where they're like, they're all that's like it. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. not true, you know? Yeah. Um, but they're the ones that get the most, at least now in this day and age, like they get the most immediate, they get the most media attention. Um so people are quick to judge people of like certain religions or certain backgrounds or certain, you know, race and all that stuff. Um, Think about fortunate in the wizarding world, like centaurs and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Like we see that not all of them like hate wizards and mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. Like friends mm-hmm. is different. I always yeah. forget that he's like a thing because I am so he's not in the movies yeah. and he is supposed to be a looker. Mm-hmm. As well as a seer. Forens is in the movies, just in number one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Not a professor. Yeah. All right. So um Sirius gosh, I can't believe I just said it like so <laughs> quickly. Sirius wasn't sure if Junior was a Death Eater or not. Um, because he was already an Azkaban by the time that like Junior, that whole thing was going on with Crouch Jr. Um and he says most of the things that he learned about Barty Crouch Jr. Um was after he escaped, I almost said from prison, which it's true, from Azkaban. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said he would bet his life that the people who Junior was like caught with are Death Eaters. And we do know that because it was the Lestranges and. Correct. Yep. Was it just like. Raul. I think it was just Rodolphus Raul. and. Oh. Yeah. I think it was Raul. Oh, Rodolphus, Bellatrix, and Raul. Okay. Yes. I think okay. so. Um, and then there is a little bit <laughs> of um, a explore the story with Barty Crouch Jr. And he's got a horrible picture of David Tennant. Why? Let me see this picture. He just looks like he's. Ooh. Half well, he dead. looks a little deranged. <laughs> um, yeah. But I mean, he is. He is. Uh, oh, father. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that was really <laughs> good. Thanks. So it says he's a loyal servant of Lord Voldemort, sent to Azkaban by his own father for torturing the Longbottoms. Uh, that we was know. a sad tweet. Oof. Yeah. Mm. Um, we know that <laughs> his full name is Bartimus Crouch Jr. Junior. And then his parents, who know, is Barty Crouch Sr. He's a wizard. And his mom is Mrs. Mrs. Crouch. Crouch. <laughs> Come on. And then he's a skilled potioner, it says, because we know that he's right. been brewing polyjuice all year long. Um, and then there's just like a couple other things um, about him on here. There's a couple of pictures, but because we know he's the one that did the car, the cark. It's not a word. Dark mark. <laughs> at, cark. At the uh, cup. And then we, there's another illustration of him um, when he's on trial, which we haven't seen about yet. But I just think it's... He looks good when he gets caught. I mean, David Tennant is a good-looking man. Look at that Look at that yes. side part. I'm just saying. Looks good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Your I, side part is sexy. It's, it's very sexy. I just thought it'd be cool just to bring a little bit of powder more into this again. So then Hermione asks, you know, well, Crouch, like, let his son off, of course, you know, being who he is or whatever. And um, no, like he's like, it's serious. It's like, would you really think someone like Crouch would let his own son off? Um, you know, he did allow his son to have a trial, but he was sent to ask me anyways. And he says, I saw the Dementors bringing him in, watched them through the bars of my cell door. He couldn't have been more than 19. They took him into a cell near mine. He was screaming for his mother by nightfall. When I, when I was like doing my notes, I was like, it was making me nauseous just thinking like, yes, he did terrible things, but to be that young and, you know, in his shoes for a moment being like, I'm going to die here and I, I just want my mom. Um, and it says he went quiet after a few days, though. They all, they all went quiet in the end, except when they shrieked in their sleep. Oof. That's awful. God, hearing serious talk about it is I know. It's rough. I'm thinking about Crouch, <clears throat> senior and junior. So it says that he let him have a trial, right? Mm -hmm. Here's my thing. If you do horrific things like that, if Alana did, then, you know, you have a place where you belong. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I think of, like, if you bring it into real life situations, like these people who, you know, have these children that commit crimes and stuff like that, even the ones that are, you know, involving maybe death you know mm -hmm. how can you not have how can a consequence you want your kid to just like you still love them but, but that doesn't mean that they should get out of yeah. it right well, and especially too when you are like almost like the, the head law of and that. order yeah. you know what i mean like you have to be like I, i'm not giving you special treatment i don't fall because it will be senior that for way sending very him. negatively mm -hmm. and that probably killed him yeah oh yeah i mean but i don't know i don't know because he seems very much like he hates anything dark. like he probably mm -hmm. the second he found out it was his son he might have had like a moment or two to grieve or like a little bit of time to grieve and then he was like i, I but almost he also like blocking himself to be thinking this is just another death eater you know what i mean this is just another person that is on the dark side but it doesn't mean that they forget Do no. you know what i'm saying no because on the outside you can see how people deal with things but you don't really even know what's going on underneath very true i mean yeah. obviously we know that he, he helped allowed his it wife yeah switch everything around and then he had him at home but like he's still in just another prison essentially you know nope. it's um, like it's like the uh the stone bringing people back from the dead. Mm. But it's mm -hmm. like not really, Yeah, not, like, you're not really you know, alive. You, you're not yeah. in actual, like you're not yeah. in Azkaban, but you're not free either. Correct. Um, and so then they asked like, oh, Harry's like, is he still in Azkaban? And he said, no, he died. Um, or did he? Yeah, he's like, he's not in there anymore. He died die? about a year <laughs> after they brought <laughs> him in. And they're like, he died? And I literally was like, uh, or did he die? Yeah. How crazy, though, that, like, it's not really questioned that a relatively healthy 19-year-old boy goes into um, goes into a jail, and a year later he's dead and nobody seems phased by it. I don't think it's uncommon. Right. I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, that's kind of sad. I think that's why um, we learn, right? I think in the Azkaban, um, there's an article on Pottermore that they no longer use Dementors and is probably a little bit of a happier, I wouldn't say happier place because I think there's a lot of evil and death seeped into those walls. Oh, I don't think you can get rid of that. No. You know what saying. I'm saying? Like, yeah. You know, without the Dementors there, they're probably not... Um, Dying as often? Yes, with like not eating and, you know, all of that stuff. Um so I'm going to speaking and I'm going to read a little bit more from the chapter with Sirius talking. And he says, most go mad in there and plenty stop eating in the end. They lose the will to live. You could always tell them, tell when a death was coming because the Dementors could sense it. They got excited. That makes me sick. Yep. The boy looked pretty sickly when he arrived. Crouch being an important ministry member, he and his wife were allowed um, a deathbed visit. That was the last time I saw Barty Crouch, half carrying his wife past my cell. She died herself, apparently, uh, shortly afterwards. Grief, wasted away, just like the boy. Crouch never came for his son's body. The Dementors buried him outside the fortress. I watched them do it. And I literally was like, woof. Um, Dude, they must have done that 
fast, though. But, like, think that, like, he <laughs> left his wife there. Because if you don't, I mean, spoiler, if you didn't read these books yet, um, his mom, Junior's mom, swapped with him. That's a mother's love, though. I mean, she would well, not have taken no for an answer. And if that's I what think she, she too to knew what she was dying. So she's like, I'm willing to, like, swap so you can have a life because I'm going to be dying anyways. Like, she was sick. But not even going back. Oh, just... I guess you know what dementors they don't care a body's a body you know but the thing is that it would have been suspicious had he gone back because then people would have seen the body potentially whereas like the dementors they don't have eyes they don't know they just know that it's a being so -hmm. they buried it yeah and that was the only way to make it be flawless like the flawless plan yeah and I I literally wrote talking about you know how with Azkaban (laughs) We've, we've we've kind of discussed, I remember, um, because that's where the, the Dementors have originated, where if they were born out of that place, because a lot of like hellish things happened there. And then, you know, with the prison and everything, um, and we know that a lot of death and dying has happened and people are just miserable there in general, that having the walls steeped in all of that, I literally wrote in my notes, adds misery to the place. <clears throat> yeah. You know, more death, more dying. And, you know. Do they say that ghosts don't even occupy that place, though? I feel mm-hmm. like I don't think yeah. ghosts yeah. Really, yeah. I don't, don't think they would bother. It's like too miserable. Yeah. Yeah. Why would you want to stay there? Myrtle might like it. Oh. Oh, Myrtle the turtle. <laughs> oh. Um. So, like, quite quickly after that, Crouch Senior loses pretty much everything. You know, his son dies, his wife's dying. He loses a lot of his popularity points after Junior died because people start kind of, you know, um, when when people die, they like almost depending on the person, uh, either see a lot of their faults or a lot of their like great points. And they're like, Oh, he was such a young kid. And, Mm -hmm. um, what else were they saying? How old was he? Like 19 ish. You know, he died within a year. So 1920, he was young. And it says, once the boy had died, people had start feeling a bit more sympathetic towards the son. Um, and started asking how a nice young lad from a good family had gone so badly astray. The conclusion was that his father never cared much for him. Um, so that basically kind of like sealed the deal with him no longer being in running for the ministry of Ma- minister of magic. So it went to fudge instead. And then he kind of got um, like swept along. It says to the department of international magical cooperation. And I like, you know, so he lost everything because of all of these things happened in a very short period of time. And so then reading again from the book, I just liked this section had a lot of Mm -hmm. long things, but like, I I, I think a lot of it's like important. um, Mm -hmm. And I liked the way it's written. So like, I didn't want to summarize it. And it says there was a long silence. Harry was thinking of the way Crouch's eyes had bulged as he looked down at his disobedient house off back in the wood, into the wood at the Quidditch world cup. This then must have been why Crouch had overreacted to Winky being found beneath the dark mark. It had brought back memories of his son and the old scandal and his fall from grace at the ministry, which I mean, isn't really true. Cause we know that he, he's looking at her and he's bulging. His eyes are bulging. Cause he's like, my son got out and now yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. He's terrified. Yeah. 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 You know, that's scary, scary stuff, but that's a good conclusion for Sirius to come to. It was Harry, but Oh, sorry. That's good. <laughs> Either of them. <laughs> um, And so Crouch is said to have been obsessed with catching dark wizards, possibly to gain some of his popularity back. Um, And then Ron mentions that he came to search Snape's office. And, um, like, I'm pretty sure he's like, well, that doesn't... Oh, Sirius goes, well, that doesn't really make sense. And Ron's like, yeah, it does. Um, And he's like, no, like, if he wanted to do it, like, why wouldn't he also be coming to all of, like, the other tasks? And, like, he would see Snape there anyway. So, like, why does it matter... Mm -hmm that he's doing it like late at night and all that stuff. Um, And so then they go back and forth because these books are made for us to distrust Snape completely. And, and so they're now on the topic of like, is he a good guy, bad guy kind of thing. And um, it's again brought up that Dumbledore trusts Snape. You know, we know that he tried to save Harry before. So Ron and Hermione are going back and forth because Hermione is like, it doesn't make sense. And she's not wrong. It doesn't make sense that Snape would be, you know, trying to hurt Harry. Not so much hurt Harry, but like put him, put his name in the goblet. Why would he be doing all these? Why would he be a bad wizard? 
why would he try to save Harry like first year and all of these things? Mm-hmm. And Dumbledore trusts him. And Ron's like, well, trying to go back and forth. So Harry's like annoyed with them trying to fight. So loudly he's like, all right, serious. And what do you think? Um, I want to hear your opinion. So he says, <clears throat> I think they both got a point. <laughs> <laughs> said Sirius, looking thoughtfully at Ron and Hermione. Ever since I found out Snape was teaching here, and we also had to remember with Sirius, him and Snape have a history too. True. He doesn't care for him at all. So like, I feel like if he's going to say anything kind of in a positive light with Snape, like that's something that you should like really listen to because he's not just saying that because he right. likes the guy. He doesn't. Right, 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 right. Um, He says, I I wondered why Dumbledore hired him. Snape's always been fascinated by the dark arts. He was famous for it at school. Slimy, oily, greasy-haired kid he was, Sirius added, and Harry and Ron grinned at each other. Snape knew more curses when he arrived at school than half the kids in seventh year. He was a part of a gang of Slytherins who nearly all turned out to be Death Eaters. Mm. Sirius held up his fingers, began ticking off names. And this is what I really like, um, that he starts naming people. Because really, this is the first time we hear any any other names, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, thinking with Fantastic Beasts, because he names Rosier first, and we see that she's a character in the Fantastic Beasts movies, Crimes mm-hmm. of Grindelwald. Mm-hmm. So, Rosier and Wilkes, they were both killed by Aurors the year before Voldemort fell. The Lestranges, they're a married couple. They're in Azkaban. And then we also know his brother um, is also a uh, Death Eater, correct? Rabbis Dan? The strange is under his name. Oh, at least he's a dark and, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Avery, from what I've heard, he wormed his way out of trouble by saying he'd been acting under the imperious curse. Do he's still think, at large. Do you think he could turn into a worm? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Thanks. Um, but animated. as far as I know, <laughs> Snape was never even accused of being a Death Eater. Not that that means much. Plenty of them were never caught, and Snape certainly clever and cunning enough to keep himself out of trouble. Cunning. <laughs> cunning? Really? <laughs> Witty. I'm like, will they use my house words? <laughs> Loyal. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> And then it goes yeah, on to say is. how Snape knows Karkaroff pretty well, but he wants oh, to keep God. that quiet. Um, oh, God. So is it a movieism that Snape? I mean, because they talk about it on the trial, but I guess like maybe that's all coming out after Sirius has been in prison, so he doesn't know. I'm wondering if he was accused by somebody of being a Death Eater, but then cleared. Like, yeah, somebody said, "Oh yeah, Snape, look into him," and then they were like, "Whoa, whoa, he's not." Don't I know, say that. I know. So Karkaroff, then it's just kind of like, no, he wasn't. I know Karkaroff. Well, oh, he, he in just the says movie, here, he though, does say Snape in um, the trial. Yeah, but he said, I, as far as I know, Snape was never even accused of being a Death Eater, which isn't true. Hmm. But we see that as Karkaroff saying Snape. We'll have to wait for the memories. Well, this is what I'm saying. So with, with this memory, he says Snape, but this is after he's in, in Azkaban, so he wouldn't so, know. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, but you would sense. think, well, I mean, I guess he literally, like, hasn't even been out that long to yeah. do research and even know what was in the media at that point, yeah. you know? And, and and maybe he's thinking, too, like, Dumbledore trusts him. And yeah. So I'm not going to look into it too much. Um. And so he, we learn um, a few more of the Death Eaters. Harry mentions Karkaroff wanting to talk to Snape and how Snape had been avoiding him. And he's like, yeah, Karkaroff looked really worried. Snape looked really annoyed. Um, and then Karkaroff showed Snape something on his arm. But he's like, I don't know what that was. Uh, and Sirius is like, okay, well, I don't know what to make of that. But uh, Dumbledore trusts Snape. So I'm sure that, um, you know, he wouldn't hire Snape if he had worked for Voldemort. And I was like, well, mm-hmm. <laughs> you're wrong. Actually... Actually, he did. (laughs) And actually, he does. (laughs) And then, uh, why would Moody and... I almost said Judy. (laughs) Why would Moody and Judy... uh, Why would Moody and Crouch want to look into Snape's office so bad? Um, And then Moody probably would want to search all of the teacher's offices because he takes his job very seriously being uh, the Defense Against the Dark Arts, you know, stuff. And it says, this is what he says, Sirius says about Mooney. I'll say this for Moody though. He never killed if he could help it, which I like that, you know, he's an aura and we know that he very much um, is against 
all of this dark magic as well, like dark arts on all of these things. And he wants to bring these people to justice. So it kind of is a good juxtaposition between him and Crouch, seeing how both of them kind of want the same goal. You know, they are both technically fighting for the light side, but he's like, he never killed if he could help it. Yeah. Snape was accused in the book. Yeah. Okay. I thought you thought it was movieism. We were wondering if it was. Oh, no, it says, Snape, he shouted, Severus Snape. Snape has been cleared by the council, said Crouch disdainfully. He has been vouched for by Albus Dumbledore. No, shouted Karkaroff, straining at the chains that bound him into the chair. I assure you, Severus Snape is a Death Eater. And then Dumbledore gets up and he's like, Meh. Yeah, Just so that's like, what I was saying <laughs> with, with um, Sirius saying, as far as I know, he's never been accused of being a Death Eater. serious not, no. Because he was already in Azkaban at that point in time when they were doing... Don't they hear all that stuff, though? But I don't... He's even saying, he goes, I didn't know any about any of the stuff about um, Junior until he got out of Azkaban. And so I'm saying maybe because he trusted Dumbledore and he's like, he wouldn't hire someone that worked for Voldemort. And he would hire, like, if he trusts Snape, I have to trust Dumbledore. Yeah, yeah. So he was not looking into it is what I'm thinking. So going back to talking about Moody. So he's always, always brought people in alive when po- wherever possible. He was tough, but he never descended to the level of the Death Eaters. Crouch, though, he's a different matter. Is he really ill? If he is, why did he make those, the effort to drag himself up to Snape's office? And if he's not, what's he up to? What was he doing at the World Cup that was so important he didn't turn up in the top box? What's he been doing while he should have been judging the tournament? Well... Wouldn't you like to know? Mm-hmm. Um, so then Sirius realizes, like, oh, no, I lied. I'm skipping ahead. So Sirius then asks Ron to talk to his brother because, as we know, Percy works for him. And he really it sounds like he's the only one that's been talking to Crouch. But he's only been getting, like, correspondence through mail. Um, letters from the owls. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, just ask him if he's heard anything about Crouch or um, all of that stuff. And then even ask about Bertha Jorkins because that's, that's another very odd thing because it has been months and the woman has not turned up and only now are they thinking to like try to find her. That's terrible. Months. Work on a cover up. <sighs> yeah, and then Harry chimes in. He's like, oh, well, I talked to Bagman and he told me that they hadn't, um, you know done anything with it because it just seems like they don't care. (laughs) So I'm going to read what he says um, because he's quoted in the article, Siri said, like at the, he's reading the Daily Prophet. Mm. It's blustering on about how bad um, Bertha's memory is, which is, you know, something to talk about because she's been zapped so many times by a memory term. Crouch. Voldemort gets your memories. He says what's in your head. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> it says well maybe she's changed since i knew her but the birth that i knew wasn't forgetful at all quite the reverse Ooh. which means she was probably hit with those memory charms a lot well yeah. she knew a lot yes she was a bit dim but she had an excellent memory for gossip okay. it used to get her into tr- a lot of trouble she never knew when to keep her mouth shut. Still gets her in trouble. Mm-hmm. I can see her being a bit of a liability at the Ministry of Magic. Maybe that's why Bagman didn't bother to look for her for so long. Was no she excuse. a Nagini snack? Yeah, I would think oh, so. Oh, for sure. We don't, know. We don't morsel. know, like, for sure, for sure, though? No. Okay. But we know she's not no longer with the living. Nagini num nums. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to laugh, but it was well, I'll sing a Scooby Snack. <laughs> Scooby Snack. Scooby Snack. Are they delish? I don't know. Cause they're for dogs, and I'm not one. <laughs> Scooby Snacks. You want to go eat some of Fozzie's treats? No, they smell like rotten. They I've eaten like milk fish. bones before. Y'all are weird. I tried a milk bone. I know, they're not bad. They're not milk bone. They're dried lamb lung. But no, <laughs> lamb. Lung? Lung. He's allergic to everything. So eat a lung. <laughs> it's a big deal. Uh, eat a lung. <laughs> eat a lung. <laughs> Do they taste good? No, they don't. Eat a lung. <laughs> so, Harry and the Potters coming to a theater near you. Never. <laughs> They're going to be at LeakyCon. I but. know. So, uh, Sirius realizes the time and uh, in case you care, it's half past three. 
and he tells them that they should be getting back to school. And then he's like, Terry, don't sneak out. Don't do anything you would do because people are trying to get you. Hide your kids. Hide your wives. Hide your Harry. Hide your Harry. They're coming for you. <laughs> um, and he's like, I don't want you. I don't want you trying to sneak out to see me. Don't be getting into trouble. Um, and he's like, and if, but if anything odd does happen, like tell me. I'm going to be staying here. I want to know. I want to know if anything scary happens. I want to know if you're in trouble. You've been breaking out into song a lot. I don't know why I do what I do. No, I enjoy it. I'm just pointing it out. And when they are talking about him, his advice to them is, please call me Snuffles, the poochiest of pooches. <laughs> Sir Snuffleupagus. Sir Snuffles. I wonder how he came up with that. Do you think a, I guarantee a it was friend James. called him that? I oh, guarantee God. you. James. And it sure. stuck. Well, what if like he was snogging someone on the reg... Not Regulus, but on the regular. <laughs> <laughs> and they nicknamed him that. I bet you that like Regulus that person, would have been really uncomfortable if he was And then and James overheard and was like, mm, Snuffles. And now he's Snuffles. Yeah, probably. I guarantee like it was James calling him Snuffles. But because of someone or just because of James? Just because of James, I, I think, think. just because of James. No, I want it to be someone else. I mean, you can think that. I do. <laughs> Already <laughs> Ruski. So... He then was like, yo, bros, I'll walk you to the village and I got to go deal with my dog, my dog problems. Okay. Got to catch some rats. <laughs> yeah. Got to catch some rats. <laughs> Pokemon. I know a Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> got to catch some red heads. Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I only catch radicates. I don't know what you're I saying. I like to evolve Pokemon. mine radicates into radicates. <laughs> who, who wants a radicate? I don't know. Not Literally no tail. one. But who wants rat tattoos? They're mm, cute. Nobody. They're purple. They are actually swish and flick purple. <laughs> <laughs> I literally don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he transforms back into Snuffles slash Petfoot. Great large black dog. Boo, 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 boo. And so they walk back. Um, he walks back to the village and he's hopefully going to find himself another newspaper he can read. And then the trio kind of have a conversation on their way back to the castle and Ron's wondering out loud whether Percy knows all of these things about his boss. And he's like, maybe he doesn't care. It'd probably just make him admire Crouch even more. Yeah, Percy loves rules. He'd just say Crouch was refusing to break them for his own son. And then Hermione goes, Percy would never throw any of his family to the Dementors, said Hermione severely. And Ron responds with, <laughs> I don't know, said Ron. If you thought we were standing in the way of his career, Percy's really ambitious, you know. And I was like, oh, it basically does happen. Like, you know, he, at the end of this book, because of the things that Harry and Dumbledore say and his family backing Harry, um, um, he, he chooses his career over his family. And then unfortunately at the very last minute, um, he realizes how important his family is and how, Mm -hmm. uh, important family is. And, um, not, I don't want to say it's a little too late, but like it almost is, you know, he just gets to be there at the very last second of, Fred dying, <gasps> which makes me real sad. Um, and I like that well, they're like on that happy note. <laughs> yeah, I like that they are basically like right in time for dinner. And Ron remarks, he's like, "Okay, Snuffles really must like you, Harry, because he's really trying to eat rats because he's like smelling dinner. He really, he's really trying to eat rats." But he's like, "Imagine having to live off rats when you could be, you know." Eating Hogwarts food all day, all night. Yeah. Feast me up, baby. Okay. Feast me up. Feast me up. Lightning bolt sounds. <laughs> Boom. All right. There were some that were posted. Scrolling, scrolling. Scrolling, scrolling. Okay. This is from um, Isaiah. Do you think you could sort of carve the dark mark off? I don't no, think you could. I don't think so. I think it's... You have to chop your arm off. bone deep. I think you got to do something wicked to get it off. Like lose an arm. That's some dog But like when magic. he's gone for good... It just faded. It fades. It fades almost off though, doesn't it? Yeah, but there's But it's still, still there. But it comes back with um, the daughter. Right? Oh, he's got a daughter. 
I really um, wanted to yell that, but I think she's sleeping. <laughs> Your daughter is sleeping. Mm-hmm. Logan asks, do you think Winky knows that something is or was up with both Crouch and Crouch Jr., or is Imperio not traceable with house elves? I think she knew. I, I think, think she, she knew, knew everything. Yeah, I mean, she knew. With uh, Hepzibah Smith's house elf, she yeah. knew stuff was up. Oh, yeah, yeah, but they're sure. they're bound. They can't. You can't spill your master secrets. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Unless you're Dobby. <laughs> Tech lover says, if you were Bertha's boss, how long would you wait before looking for her? Okay. Honestly, like maybe a week after she was supposed to be back, I would no, start. Dude. I've had a coworkers day. who were like a day? late to work and I'm if texting you don't hear them, from like, anybody. Are you okay? Yeah. What if she just like decided to extend her vacation? Yeah, but you got to tell You're people. Tell you man. need to at least contact. I guess that's true. You need to try and be like, are you okay? Megan's out here letting people go know, a week. Right? <laughs> okay, well, I thought that was way better than months. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. I would never go looking. I'm just kidding. Slytherin. Don't worry. I don't know. Like, what if I w- didn't realize? I would feel so bad. Be like, oh, I didn't even notice they were gone, you know? That mm. honestly would probably be me, and that's horrible. They <laughs> knew. You would notice. You think I would? I think that's every. That's all the ones from the chat. Unless somebody sent. Okay. Oh, my um, gosh. <laughs> Can uh, funny Vinny sort all 150 Pokemon into the Hogwarts? Okay. I wish How it about was we only just do the first four or first three? First three, Bulbasaur, what? Charmander and Squirtle. Yeah. Okay. Bulbasaur. Do Pikachu as well. Oh yes. Okay. Pikachu is a thousand percent a Gryffindor. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Sure. Well, or Ash's Slytherin. Pikachu is. Yes. A Gryffindor. Ash's Pikachu is a Gryffindor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do we want to just sort Ash's Pokemon? Like Ash's That's, Charmander, Ash's can we, Bulbasaur. Can we can we sort Ash? I had a kid, a kid, a kid Dude. I went to grade school with who once dressed up as him for Halloween and looked identical to him. The whole him. of the Squirtle Squad is a slither. Yes, Vinny is definitely correct. Squirtle Squad. Ash Squirtle is a muggle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ash friend did ask me something muggle. yesterday, and I, he, something about magic. I'm like, I'm a muggle. Like I'll admit it, I'm a muggle. I think Bulbasaur a is a Ravenclaw. Bulbasaur? Yeah. Charmander's a Hufflepuff. Charmander, Charmander is, is definitely a Hufflepuff. Super puff, especially the way he's found. And he's, yeah. yeah, he's so loyal to oh. his little master, flame on the big jerk. Is, is Jigglypuff a puff? <laughs> Jigglypuff is a Slytherin. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, show, putting everybody yo. to sleep. They're putting everybody to sleep out here. Because <laughs> we don't want to talk to them. Hide your kids. Hide your Don't wife, talk to me. Put everyone to sleep. Hide your Pidgeys. Hide your Spearows. <laughs> <laughs> hide your Red Tez. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh. <laughs> What house do you think Rita was in? Did we talk about this already? I bet she was Dana. a Ravenclaw. I think Ravenclaw that's my I friend. also bet she was Ooh, a Ravenclaw. Definitely yeah. a Ravenclaw. I think she, I think it was like mm. Ravenclaw and Slytherin were like real high up on mm. her. But she's, I think she was a Ravenclaw. Like not, not in the way that like because she's not <laughs> she's not a nice human well, she's being. She's creative but she's, she's as well. Cunning she's cunning and ambitious. Correct. Yes. But, but she witty. but she's also creative with and like that's a Ravenclaw trait. You know. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't. Be. She's not. She's not a dumb lady. No, she's a mean one. She's not a dumbbridge, but she's not a dumbbridge. So, uh, <laughs> story, fan story, fan story. This comes from Jessica Lang. Hi, Jessica. Hello. What up? What up? Hi, Megan, Katie, Sarah, and Tiffany. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your November so far. Which Woo! November? Which so November? It's been a while. I wanted to send it. <laughs> this is why it's already this late. <laughs> I wanted to send in my Potter story and profile and after about two months of listening to you guys I finally got around to it and we finally got around to reading it I am only 20 years old so I did not grow up with the books in the same way you guys did my dad is older than most first time parents and was 40 when I was born so when I was young he wasn't quite sure how to relate to me as a young girl and was not that great with children in general he could talk to my brother about the various sports he was playing or ask ask us about school but otherwise was unsure what to say to me or how to be interested in the same things as me we didn't have a bad relationship it was just sort of awkward when i was very young when i was about six he began reading sorcerer's stone and i wanted to read too since we had just watched the movie so he got me the audiobooks shout out to jim dale woo, 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 woo. i listened to them every night to put me to sleep and finally read the actual books at age eight before then they were just bedtime stories but when i was finally able to read them by myself i understood them better and wanted to talk to my dad about what i had read We were both excited that we had this special connection, one that my mom and brother didn't really understand. I got through all six books in a matter of months. Wow, at eight. 
That's, That's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, dude. And when Deathly Hollows came out, my dad and I bought two copies and raced to read them. Sounds like me and you, Meg, <laughs> checking in every few chapters. We went to the midnight premieres of the last few movies together and continued to talk about the books and our love for them over the years, noticing things we missed and discussing theories and connections. Potter facilitated the conversations, and fi- I finally felt comfortable telling my dad everything, and he was comfortable listening. Love it. Now, I am a college student in New York City, and we both still listen to the audiobooks and have been texting frantically about Fantastic <laughs> Beasts, which we agreed to wait to watch together when I am home for Thanksgiving. So, yeah, I hope by now you've watched that. (laughs) (laughs) Potter was one of the first things we were able to love together, and I would have loved the books even if he didn't. But because of them, we learned how to communicate. I call him for advice on everything at least twice a week, and the phone call normally ends up lasting much longer than the time it takes for my one question to be answered. I am so grateful to these wonderful books for the relationship that we have created over these past 12 years and for the years and years of discussing still to come. I know that no matter what, we will always have the entire wizarding world to theorize about together, and that is a great source of comfort. I love, Mm -hmm. love, love this. Mm -hmm. Here is my Potter profile. Huffledore. Nice. I have taken the test four times and gotten Hufflepuff and Gryffindor twice each. Wanda's Hawthorne, unicorn hair, 11 and a quarter inches, unyielding flexibility. Patronus oh. is a Siberian cat. That's pretty cool. It's pretty Bob's apron right there. That is yeah. Bob's apron <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Ilver Morty House is Puckwudgie. Um, you don't have to read this part if it's too long. We're going to. Doesn't matter. I'm going to anyway. <laughs> I just wanted to thank you. I am in my senior year of college, and doing this reread with you guys has been a source of joy during this anxious time in my life. So mm-hmm. I wanted to say thank you for working so hard on this podcast. You all give me an opportunity to relax and not worry about graduation or my thesis or applying for grad school, et cetera. I am infinitely grateful. I needed something fun, but not too time consuming to look forward to every week. And Swish and Flick is that for me. Mm-hmm. Sending lots of love to you all, Jessica. Wow. Oh, Jessica, I you rock this. Yeah. I, I will say at the beginning when she's like, said she was 20, she's like, so I grew up a little bit different than you. I'm like, I'm, I'm, you were like the same age. No, we're not. You're not. No. <laughs> uh, like, I forget that I'm not that young anymore. Yeah. It's good to I know, feel me too. Young. Like, now that, like, whenever you do surveys on websites and stuff, I'm like in the next bracket. No. Now I'm like, no. I had a mini panic attack <laughs> like, yesterday. I was I'm like, forever. I'm 17. I'm, uh-uh. I'm like, half, I mean, I'm not halfway to 30, but I'm like, what, eight months to 30? <laughs> I don't care. Thirty and flirty, thirty flirty and thriving, thirty Honestly, flirty and thriving, thriving. <laughs> hey, I'm thriving. Where at 31. were we when I said that to you? Oh, it was like the other day the, for the principals. The the thing they were doing, like uh, she was introducing people, and she said, "I was like, they're thriving." <laughs> Honestly, you're only, you're just as young as you feel, and you're as young as you make yourself out to be. Yeah, just a number. Yes, I'm mom. Yes, I'm a teacher, and I am responsible for a lot of young people. But like. I literally find joy in things that kids like find joy in. Like, I love video games. I love Harry Potter, having fun with you guys, laughing at bathroom jokes. Like, <laughs> I literally. Have, I have no joy in anything. Well, we I know that. literally just telling this to Meg today. Yeah. Like, I, I went to a conference in New York, and there's all these business people. And, like, yeah, I was one of the younger people there. But here's all these people who are, like, coming in there. They're all dressed real nice. They've got like nice bags for their laptops. Here I come in. I threw a sweater on. I have my travel backpack with like swish and flick buttons all over it. And like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm okay with that. No part yeah. of me was like, I need to change myself. Yep. yep. I was yeah. fine with it. Like yeah. I'm a child at heart. Too short. Yeah. It's too short, guys. Yeah. It's just, it's have just fun. Exactly. crazy that I'm this old and I thought, I don't know, I thought things will be different, but it's not a bad thing. You're where you're supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, let's hear about social, our social media. media. I like Make sure media. that you follow us on Facebook at Swish and Flick Podcast and on Twitter and Instagram at Swish Flickcast. You can also subscribe to us on YouTube and join us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Swish Flickcast. And Patreon gives you the opportunity to join us for the Felix Files and Discord for um, our regular episodes live every time we record. And lots more. And more. <laughs> um, also, you can find all the information on us at swishflickcast.com, along with, I'm going to plug this right now, our you Pride merchandise. Pride. So um, Katie and I designed a whole line of Pride merchandise, and for it's, the month of June, I, 
understatement of the year how awesome it is, it is really awesome. <laughs> like i can't wait like the, we only got what our blankets and our totes and we're like yeah. where's the rest of it because I, I want the shirts they're I so want the good stickers i'm Listen, excited for the stickers i'm excited for my tumblr i said this mm-hmm. once and i'll say it again <laughs> i am proud of you during this month of pride <laughs> <laughs> thank <laughs> you not proud only for your you designs but for who you are i love you guys we love you. Ooh, I talked about you on a Felix Files that I might not ever put up, but go on. Talk about this cool thing <laughs> we're doing. So um, for the month of June, and I realize that this is coming out kind of late in June, so I'm going to explain even beyond June a little bit to you guys. Beyond. Through the end of June, <laughs> 100% of the proceeds from our Pride merchandise will be donated to Glisten. Um, if you don't know what Glisten <laughs> is, it's G-L-S-E-N. It's an organization that helps with bullying um, L- it helps with LGBTQ students in grade, school, middle school, high school who deal with bullying. Gives them a safe space. And gives them a safe when space. I, we tried to um, promote it when we did our like little short episode like last time or two times ago or whatever when we were on vacation and I didn't know how to pronounce it. I called it Glenson. <laughs> like sometimes I can't read letters and I'm like, it's like, gl- I think it's Glenson. You know I what I did? Just letters. say the letters. Glisten. So it's Glisten. Um, and then also we've decided that we're just going to like change up the charity every now and then. Maybe every month or like if we don't really make enough to like make a nice donation, we'll extend it a little bit longer or something like that. So we'll pick a new LGBT um, organization to donate to. I'm kind of thinking I want to switch to GLAAD in mm. July. Um, so we'll donate. Uh, all, it'll always be 100% of the proceeds from this merch will get donated to an LGBT organization or charity. Um, so you can check that out. It's our featured merchandise right now on our website as long as... As well as um, if you go to the merchandise page on our website, there's a pride section and everything is listed in there. Um, So there's stickers, tumblers, blankets, bags, t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, like we just like put everything out there. Did I get a so. sweatshirt? I think so. I think you got like 40 sweatshirts. I mean, I'm pretty sure that we all got like everything. Literally don't have room <laughs> for all these sweatshirts. Mm-hmm. Like to the point where, because I have I so just, many like, crewnecks and then I'm like, I should go through it. them. But a lot of them are like swish ones. Where I'm like, oh, I can't get rid of my swish sweatshirts. Yeah. I'm so excited to rep them. And like, I just want to say thank you to everybody that's bought merch yes. already mm-hmm. because you guys have been so like solid so awesome i mean like so many people have bought even if you just buy a sticker it means something and Mm. it like it means a lot to katie and i and to all four of us like we just it means a lot we've already been able to donate over 500 dollars to glisten that's bananas Um, that's awesome yeah that's awesome and also if you don't want to buy merch that's fine i all i started a donation like link on our Facebook page and you can just directly donate if you just want to go ahead and donate to Glisten. Um, I've pinned it to the top of our page and we'll probably just swap that out whenever we switch. Um, Just because, you know, I mean, like we're a group of four women who two of us are actual members of the LGBTQ community. The other two are allies and it is just an important thing to us. Vicious allies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it just it means a lot, and um, if you want to donate, we would super appreciate it. Super, so. super. <laughs> also, before I forget, I don't know if we ever like officially thank Jessica for ser- sharing her story. Did we? I did. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you for thank sharing you, your thank story. You. Like super, thank but. you. Obviously, and it was like a different twist, and I liked it a lot. I did too. Mm-hmm. But yeah, go donate to Glisten, please, and thank you, and Happy Pride Month. Woo, woo, woo. Yes, happy, happy, happy pride. Our Dude. next episode is our 100th episode, guys. Is it? Yes, it yes. is. Yes, I had to make sure that we were on episode 99. <laughs> can we have some food? Yeah. Uh, or we can do whatever we want. Are we having a feast? Then? I think it probably has to happen. We How can we not? But it'll be I the think, weekend after I come back from Aruba. So I think you need an iPad. <laughs> I think you need an iPad. I agree with you. <laughs> Let's get an iPad. All right. <laughs> I, have, I have a question for our patrons, though. So I oh. recorded... An episode oh, with um, Tiffany's friend, E. Kirk, 2006, who I know a lot of you guys like. I want to know if you actually want to hear it because I don't know what we talked about. Of course they You could listen it. to it as you edit I know. It. He hasn't sent it to me, We though. already got oh, two gotcha. yeses so, immediately on the So chance. it's... Yeah, it's, you it's, go. Well, it's like... 
kind of like a ghost story and then people are rolling in own, um, <laughs> like religious experience kind of things and like a little bit political. We don't get like crazy because I mean, I just it's a little bit of everything and I hope it. I don't think anyone would get offended. I always get nervous at like I'll say something and people get offended. Well, if you don't like it, if you think it sounds too much. No, I, I, I don't think it's it I'm like a very like a neutral person, I like to think. So um <laughs> I am not neutral, but I rein myself in. Well that's I just <laughs> let me know, know. Let us know, like comment <laughs> once you listen. Um We know. And I'll put it up as a Felix Files. It's like it, we had a good, just a saying, good like, conversation. Everybody here has already said yes, so just do it. Yeah. Do it. I mean I have to wait for him to it, send it to do me. Do it, so. it, um, do it. Let's just say where we are on so- social media. Boom. I am on Twitter at Tiff Swish underscore Flick. You can follow Katie and I on Twitter and Instagram at The Peaches Family. You can also still follow me at Meg's Mouse Tales. You can follow me at Skaterade 7, although I don't really know if that... I don't think that's a thing anymore. <laughs> I mean, we mostly post on The Peaches. <laughs> yeah, so. Skaterade 0. Yeah. <laughs> don't listen to any of them and just follow O'Malley on Instagram. Oh, How many H's? Yes. Tree. One, two, tree. Oh, wait. Oh, no. not Tarty. <laughs> Mally. Just three. One, three. One, three. two, three. Oh, Mally. Okay. And then let me know about those Felix files. Baby, you want to hear it? Let me know. Yep. Um, we'll see you next time for the 100th episode I'm of Swish and Flick. We should mention that we're not going to do a chapter reread, correct? Yes. For the 100th yeah, episode. Gonna we're going to do next. something special. Um, think our first anniversary kind of special thing. Okay. There might be tears. Of sadness because I'm leaving. Oh my god! You just you just take it too far. <laughs> Always. <It's> like, what? <laughs> She's got robot She's arms, you guys. And we have to cut her today. off. We have to end this. That concludes this week's episode. Thank you so much for listening, and don't let the Muggles get you down. Time, Time to go Martin see oh, Men man. in Black for Voldemort and Valor. Yeah. For Voldemort and Valor. <laughs> my daughter's crying. Sad tweets all around. Should I stay on here and hide and let him deal with? (gasps) Amazing! Just in my voice. (laughs) Guys, I'm taking my first sip. Stepping away. I'll I'll let you be able to ASMR it. (laughs) That's (laughs) horrific. (laughs) (laughs) I like it. Tiffany. I like it. Tiffany. Is she she cool? Heck no. Tiffany. Oh my god. Oh, I got a heck no this time. <laughs> Must mean you're serious. I remember when I thought the underdog was a monster. <laughs> Are we ready? <laughs> yeah. I'm always ready. That way I don't gotta be get ready. Stay ready. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs>